Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. I'm just checking to see how you're doing, how your week's going, and all that shit. Um, how was your Thanksgiving? You know, there's a lot of memes out there, people talking about uh, not bringing up politics. A lot of jokes. Hey, you want to fucking not get invited next year? Bring up politics. Hey, you want to fucking do this? Uh, you want to have a good time? Don't bring up politics. That's good. It's coming back around again. That's what you did. You didn't bring up politics. You didn't fucking bring up your gay uncle. You didn't bring up uh, religion. You know, there was all kinds of... You just didn't bring it up. You didn't bring up the physical abuse. You didn't bring up the pain, the lack of communication, uh, the walking depression everyone was in. You just didn't bring it up. Right, you put your face down, you ate your fucking food, and then you went back in, you watched the lions lose. That's what the fuck you did. That's what Thanksgiving was. Nothing was solved, nothing was said. You know, at least in the German Irish part of the world. I'm sure the Italians, you know, they're more emotional. I'm sure something semi personal was said. Hey, you know, uh you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> That's the, uh, that's the time I grew up in. So I had a great time yesterday. And uh, I've watched the beginnings of two really good movies this week and fell asleep like the fucking old dad that I am. Speaking of which, thank you guys for watching Old Dads, man. It's been fucking killing. You guys got people out here in Hollywood, old Tinseltown, thinking I know what I'm doing. Um, I started to watch... Um, uh, the Grifters, which for some reason I didn't see it when it came out because it just looked like a smart movie. And I was like, that looks like a movie you're going to have to think. I don't like thinking. That's where my brain was at. Movie came out when I was like 22. And then I sat down and watched it. I was like, oh, I really like this. This is fucking dark. This is a good ass movie. And then I just fell asleep. This is pre Thanksgiving dinner. You know, this is like the Wednesday before. Fell asleep to the grifters. And then last night, I started to watch Belly, the uh, Hype Williams movie with Nas and DMX. And uh, I remember, see, I saw that in the movie theater when that came out in the late 90s. A long, long, long time ago. And um, I fucking fell asleep to that. I kept waking up because there was so much gunfire in it and everything. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Is that the new segment for the dads listening to this podcast? What movie, TV show, or game did you fall asleep to? <laughs> it's always funny, you know, when you fall asleep, not in your bed, you know, in your house, you just nod off somewhere. And there's always that point right before you open your eyes, where you don't know where the fuck you are. Like, if you opened your eyes and you were, like, in the custody of a couple of terrorists in the Middle East, you'd just be like, oh, all right. <laughs> I have no idea where the fuck I, you know, or driving a car or at the mall. You know, places where you wake up. Um, did I just shut off the recording? Please tell me I didn't. Please tell me I didn't. Okay, it's still going. Um, yeah, I fell asleep... Uh, in the living room on the couch last night. And um, my lovely wife just left me there. She knew better. I think she just knew. She's like, he's, you know, a nice full plate of Thanksgiving in. He sampled all three pies. There was whipped cream on it. I'm not getting, I'm not moving this. This He is tranquilized. That's what happened to me. But... Um, that was a fun movie, though, last night. Just watching how that thing was shot was really cool. But anyway, how about the fucking NFL this weekend? The NFL is just like, fuck your marriage. We know what you want. There was three football games yesterday. God knows I didn't see them. I saw the fucking uh, Lions and Packers. That kid for the Packers got a cannon. I saw him running for his fucking life to the, to the right, throws it all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way over to the other side of the field. The fucking ball was in the air. Too long, you know, thinking like it's going to get knocked down, it's going to get picked off. Nope. Complete 
first down. I don't know if it was his first down, but whatever. It was nice. Um, three football games yesterday. There's a football game today on Black Friday. Now, everybody knows today's the day you go out with your wife. You go out to a box store. And for some reason, you put your life in jeopardy. You know, over, you know, you look at those box stores. They, it's just nothing but shit. Everything in there is disposable shit. It's not worth dying. I say this every fucking year. Don't die. Don't die over this shit. Your kid doesn't give a fuck. At the end of the day, I don't give a fuck how much your kid wants that thing. What your kid needs more than anything is your time. If you give your kid your time, your kid is going to be happy. Your kid's going to be secure and feel provided you're not screaming at him the whole time. You give your kid time, your time. It's going to be fine. And then the fact, because they didn't get that fucking toy, that BMX bike they always wanted, they'll be driven. And they'll go out in the business world with a fuck or be fucked attitude, and they'll work their way up the banking system, or maybe they'll be part of the war machine. But you can know that they felt loved when they were growing up. See, there you go. That's how it works. There's, there's got to be a fine line between giving your kid your time and getting them, you know, some of the stuff. I wouldn't even say most of the stuff that they wanted and not getting trampled at a superstore. I mean, at this point, you know that that is a fucking option. That you know you're going down there and shit could happen, right? <coughs> it was like going to a fucking soccer game in England back in the day. Soccer. A soccer game in England. Um, by the way, you know, I, I love how much they fucking pay attention to us. All of those cunts around the world. The amount of shit that fucking F1 race got. It's just like, what is the fucking problem? There's going to be cars going 200 miles an hour through the city of Los Angeles. And somehow, all of these people had a, around, the, around the world, the world, the world had a fucking problem with it. It ended up being a great race. You're always trashing American football. We don't give a fuck about your goddamn sports. Go, go do them. Nitpick, nitpick, nitpick. Ah, rugby guys are tougher. Are they? Fantastic. Go watch them. Have a good time. See ya. I'll watch my sports. Thank you very much. I will watch NASCAR. I'll watch him drive around in a circle if you don't mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. You go have fun with your fucking boomerang and your feet and whatever the fuck it is you do. <laughs> whatever the fuck it is you do over there. I don't give a fuck what you're doing. Have fun. Get out there and go do a Taipan roundup or whatever the fuck you do in the Badlands. I don't give a fuck. Australian rules football, right? Looks like a bunch of chain smokers fucking at a rave or some shit, right? I don't give a... I don't know if that's what it looks like. I, I used to watch that shit when I first got ESPN. I used to watch Australian rules football, and I loved it. And everybody looked like, like they, it, at the very least, had been convicted. They had at least one felony, you know? Long hair. Sweat. I remember they would like pick somebody up, you know, like that dumb shit people do at a wedding. You ever see that shit? Who, who does that? Is it Jewish people? They pick the fucking person up in the chair every year. There's a whole compilation of Jewish men toppling out of the chair at their own goddamn wedding. <laughs> you know, somebody has gotten seriously fucked up, really banged their head. Maybe even a slightly concussed and had to fucking shake off a concussion because you didn't want to ruin her day. You didn't want to ruin her day. Um, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. That when I see that thing, I think it's a Jewish wedding. When I see some shit, I look at that and be like, that looks like some dumb shit that my people would do. The Irish, let's get fucking hammered and then fucking pick somebody up over our head. That's just holding onto a piece of furniture. We're not even holding onto him. Let, what, what could go wrong? Let's walk out here with the linoleum tiles at the fucking VFW. Let's spin him around a little bit. And uh, you got him? Do you got him? Oh, Mikey! <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, the NFL was just like, fuck your marriage this weekend. It's fucking amazing. I also think they're like competing with the NBA. 
Look, I think it's, you, I, I get having a football game on Thanksgiving. You sit down, there should be one. But to have three, it's just such a douchey fucking move, you know, for a married person. Because it's like, I know everybody's going to want to watch the dog show. There's the Macy Day Parade. There's another game going on, right? And I'm going to be that guy just sitting in the corner all twitching like I'm wearing a wire, you know, and all the other gangsters in the room. You all right there, Bill? Is everything all right? Ah, that's cool. You know, just when's, when's, uh, just wondering when, when this was over. What are you, what are you in a hurry or something? No, no, I was just, you know, just curious. Open his fucking shirt. And then that's it. Then I'm in the fucking East River. Um, and then the NBA on Christmas shows three fucking regular season games. Who gives a fuck? One. One. How about one? Why don't you do that? I like LeBron on Christmas. You know, he's got the beard, right? Very Santa Claus-esque. Um, all right. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Did you guys see? I got a buddy of mine last week, one of my high school buddies. And he swears, he says the lock of the week every week is the Iowa Hawkeyes under. He goes, they got a great defense. They don't score any fucking points. So I'm with them in Vegas. The fucking over and under is 27 points. 27. All right, just for you people don't gamble. I mean, usually an over under where under, I mean, a low one's like 41. I feel 39 or something like that. Then you start going like, dude, what the fuck, right? Um, and the average, I don't know, let's say mid to late 40s, 27. So this week, so he bets it and it comes in. He hits, he goes, dude, he goes, I'm telling you, like eight out of 10 weeks, they're going to hit the under. Just fucking throw your money on that and then, you know, bet your other shit. And I was just like laughing and he just texts me. And the over under for the Iowa Nebraska Cornhuskers game is the lowest in college football history. Tomorrow it's 25 and a half, which is amazing to me. Not only, you know, talking a 13 to 12 game, and then not to mention when I was a kid, when I first started getting football cards, I remember Nebraska would be like playing like Kent State and they'd be like 58 and a half point favorites. And you're just like, how do you not just take fucking Kent State and be up fucking almost 60 points? And you'd do it. And then you'd watch these guys, fucking Turner Gill, Mike Rozier, Irving Fryer, Jimmy Johnson coaching the goddamn team, and they would fucking cover. Be like 45 to nothing at the half. You're like, what the fuck? And then the final score would be like 63. They always get like 63, 72. Um... This is the opposite of that, in case you're bad at math. In case you are bad at math. Um, anyway, I got to get on my shopping here. My fucking Christmas shopping. I got to start that today after the podcast. Um, I did have a great week, you know. I took a couple uh, people up in the helicopter this week, which was so much fun. I took my wife up for the first time. Um we had a great time. She actually filmed it. She put it a little bit on Instagram. I had like a fucking perfect landing. Set it down like a daisy. And she, of course, shut it off right before I landed. You know, so you, you didn't see the, the helicopter hop at all or anything, you know, or like, you know, shake. And um, I'm sitting there going like, why didn't you film the whole thing? She, oh, you know, I'm thinking about like Instagram stories. I think <laughs> like that was one of the best landings I've ever had. But anyway. Um, it was funny, you know, like I brought up one of my buddies from back in the day on like Monday. So him, the helicopter tour is all about stadiums, you know, the Rose Bowl, Dodger Stadium, um, the LA Coliseum. And then, you know, we, we couldn't obviously go over where the Rams are. That's on like LAX's airspace. Right. But he could still see it and everything. And then I bring my wife up. And I bring her around the Rose Bowl, and she goes, I want to see the ocean. It's like, all right, I get it. <laughs> so I flew her out there, looked at some big fucking houses, all these crazy houses, man. Um, that's something, you know, underrated. If you ever come out to L.A., you know, they got these helicopter tours out of Burbank Airport. Um, you should give that a shot, man, because it's, it's such a great way to see the city, and you see some of the sickest fucking homes. Every time I fly, 
no matter where I am in LA, I will look down and be like, holy shit, is that a fucking mall? Oh, that's, that's somebody's house? What the fuck, you know? I was over by, uh, way out in the valley. And right along the 118, right before you go through the Santa Susana, Susana Pass. Uh, north side of the street, just out of nowhere. There's, I guess because they can look out over the whole valley. It must be a sick view. But it's these gigantic fucking houses. Like stupid looking houses. Like, remember those houses from like MTV Cribs? When they used to like rent houses and pretend that they actually paid the artists that made all those hit albums, you know, fucking travesty. Anyway, anyway, plowing ahead. Um, so who do we got today? We got the Miami Dolphins. I don't know who the fuck they're playing. I'm going to check that out. I do have to go Christmas shopping. Uh, my daughter has out, uh, has outgrown her bike. So I got to get her a new bicycle before she just becomes one of these computer head kids. Cause I like having them outside. Like I did that yesterday. I, um, we go to the playground and we fucking, uh, cruise around in my old truck and all of that shit. Just having a, like, I, they got to have like that tangible stuff because the video games are, are, are ridiculous. So anyways, last night I'm watching like Charlie Brown, which I really fucking hate that show. I like the music, but I fucking hate the show. They're just so, like, the, the really old school ones, they're just so unnecessarily fucking mean to that kid. Like the great punk pin Charlie Brown, he's showing up to the houses, and everybody, what'd you get? I got candy, I got candy, I got candy. And then he's like, I got a rock. Like, who the fuck gives a kid a rock? So my daughter's going, it's because they don't like his costume. He cut too many holes in the in the, the ghost sheet thing. It's like, well, that not that considered cute? You'd f- give him a rock? They did, like, three houses. He got a rock every single time. Like, the, even the parents hate him. So I'm sitting there watching it. And I forget who said what to him. And I finally looked at my daughter. She's six. I'm like, why does everybody hate this kid? And she says to me, she goes, because he's a blockhead. Or at least that's what everybody on the show says. <laughs> I love how she gave him the benefit of the doubt. Hey, at least so I heard. You know, the word on the street is he's a blockhead. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fucking difficult show. Like, I, I, have a, I don't know what it is about that show. Like, I have a real hard time watching it. Is it because I look like him? I'm not going to lie to you. I was watching it going like, I could be him for, for fucking uh, Halloween. Shave off my beard. You know, draw one curl on the front of my head. Where the fuck am I going to get that shirt? You know, they're going to, you know, they must sell that somewhere, right? Black shorts, yellow socks, brown shoes. You always had shoes on. It's just, it's, it's a really, it's a fucking sad, it's a, I don't know what it is. Like, I used to watch it all the time and I loved it. I do like the part where Snoopy acts like he's, you know, like he really acts out the aviation. He gets the fucking, you know, the rudders going, the feet pit. I don't know. I don't know what is it on planes. Um, he's working those as he's going down the runway and shit. Like somebody who flew planes was drawing that. Oh, is that right, Bill? Is that what you think? Is that what you think? Anyway, um, so I'm on basically vacation, which means I'm writing something. Um, thank you to everybody out there, by the way, that watched the uh, the Club Soda Kenny movie trailer for soda. Right? Don't be a bitch and bring your bitch to the movie that everybody's talking about. How great was Club Soda Kenny? I got it up on my Instagram page. That is something that we shot um, during the strike. You know? And uh, it was funny. I, I put up all the money for it. So I didn't, you know, it wasn't a scab or anything like that. But it was funny. There was a few union guys came up to the set. Hey, what's uh, what's going on here? Like I'm like, that's you know, it's self uh, self funded. The guy's like, oh yeah, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Think I'm just fucking shooting here in L.A. during a fucking strike? Give me a little credit. I at least go up to Bakersfield. God damn it! But uh, Club Soda Kenny absolutely killed it. Um. He was a natural. He was a natural. So if you guys give it a bunch of likes, maybe we can actually uh, turn that thing into a movie. I think it would make a an incredible, uh, incredible comedy and drama. 
because we, we were kind of melding Dirty Harry with the naked gun. I think it's a really good idea. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. You never know what's going to happen. But uh, and Bobby Lee was fantastic in it, and Adam Ray, all of these people. Um, of course, I'm, I'm drawing a blank now. Jay Lassen is the mayor. You know, we had a great time. Great time. So there you go. So that's what I learned from old dads, right? I did old dads. I learned how to fucking write and direct. And now I can make these stupid little things that I want to make. All right. I'll give you guys the whole backstory. Well, you know, I'm thankful for you guys, you know, for coming out to my shows. Look at me. Oh, Billy, pay, pay it forward. Um, how that whole thing came about was, you know, over the years, I've just been fascinated with Kenny's background and him talking about it you know, doing security and being a police officer and all of that. So I started picking up on some of his jargon and stuff, and we would be driving into towns to do a gig, and I would start doing like a gumshoe voiceover. You know, like it was five in the afternoon in Cary, North Carolina. She was a tall drink of water, da 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 just doing that dumb shit. A couple of shittums on the left, like how he talks, and he would just start laughing, and then I just kept doing it. Like, at first, just sort of teasing him. And then after a while, I started saying, like, you know, we should fucking do something. We should do, like, a fucking, like, uh, a cop series or something with you. And he's like, I'll, I'll fucking do it. So, you know, like most shit, you just say you're going to do it. You never fucking do it. So when we were shooting old dads, you know, working long days, and we were getting up early, and I had to act in the thing, too. So I was like, you know, needed to get the juice is flowing here so I was I would just start riffing with him on the way down you know my brain was like at a standstill I had to you know start it up so I would just start doing that gumshoe shit and I was just like you know what fuck this we should do this right and he's like all right we'll do it and then I didn't have any time and I was burnt out for the movie and then the strike click came and I was like all right I got time let's fucking do it so that's how it all came about and uh like I said Club Soda Kenny fucking killed it it was funny. The people on the crew was like, who is this guy? Because they're looking up IMDb. He's got no credits. He's a fucking, he's a 60-something-year-old overnight sensation. The latest, uh, the latest hot throb. Um, so anyway, I mentioned that I am off until uh, I go to Vegas uh, the weekend of the Super Bowl, so um, I do have to keep my act sharp, though. So I'm thinking I'm just going to do these pop-in shows. I'm, I want to run my hour like once a week somewhere. And uh, like last year, I did a couple of, I did like the Troubadour and the Roxy. I'm thinking of maybe doing a couple more places like that. And uh, just like once a week, just running the hour, fucking around with some new shit. Like, that's kind of the only way to take... It's the weirdest thing with, like, stand-up. It's like, you can take time off, but you can't stop doing your act. Or it just... It's, it starts shrinking. It atrophies. <laughs> You're like, what do you got right now? Oh, man, I got, like, an hour and fucking 25 minutes. You know? If I took six weeks off when I came back, I'd probably have 25 minutes. Be, be like, 50. I would have to, like, struggle to, like, do the hour. So, um got to get back into that and uh who knows maybe fucking lose this last fucking 10 pounds that i've just been hovering on hovering on just cannot seem to get over the goddamn hump i've had a fucking this whatever this thing is that's going around that my kids had now my wife has it i I'm, it's been settling in slowly to me but i've been doing this fucking old wife's wife's tail thing whatever the hell it is just eating raw ginger and then raw honey and then drinking lemon water. And I don't know. The older I get, the more I'm starting to think, like, if I just fucking do that most of the time, I can avoid going into CVS and then just wondering, you know, you know all those cold medicines, those fucking cocksuckers. You know, I was changing light bulbs before everybody came over for Thanksgiving. And I, was, I just remember when I was growing up, they were saying, like, you know, they have the technology to make a light bulb that never fucking burns out. You know, they just don't want to do it. It's just like, why don't they just fucking do that? Why don't they just, because it's all set up. You got to keep making fucking money. Oh, God, I'm not going down this thing again. 
Look, you know, there's a helicopter that they're working on. I keep fucking posting it. It's literally going to change um, helicopter aviation as far as like, I think it's like a five passenger and it's only like 750 grand, which, you know, helicopters are, you know, super expensive because of all the moving parts <coughs> and anything above a uh, four seater Robinson, anything that can take, take that can take five people or more on the East Arcade numbers of the A-Stars, it's like well over a million bucks. So this thing's coming out. Speaking of those light bulbs, the main rotor blades um, are just guaranteed for life. Whatever the hell they're made out of, like, you know, the one that I fly is like a two-piece system. You got to check it every day, to, you know, every time you fly to make sure it's not starting to separate. Obviously, that would be catastrophic. And there's a certain amount of hours you have to replace them, and they're ridiculously expensive. And this thing's coming out. It's affordable. It's durable. Um, and it's on wheels, which really uh, fascinates me. Because I was sitting, you know, I've done a bunch of those full downs. And, you know, you got to slide on the skids and shit like that. There's always a chance you could roll it over. But, I mean, you know, planes roll over too. But just sitting there, it just seems like you could, like, the combination of both. Where you could bleed off all that forward airspeed when you flare and then level out. And then you sort of do, like, a little bit of a running landing. If you were, like, landing on, like, wheels, man, that could be even smoother. I don't know. It's just shit you think about. You know, it's just stuff that I think about. So anyway, um, I don't have any reads this week, and I don't have any shows to promote. Um, I'm going to have Joe Bartnick on next month. I want to thank everyone that came out to his shows in Pittsburgh. He put out a killer special this year, and he deserves to have people coming out to his show. So we're going to have Joe on next month. I got a couple more surprise guests, and uh, I think that it. that's it. But other than that, Old Billy Freckles is in town. I'm going to go play with my kids. I think I'm going to go to the car show this weekend. For the I've been to a car show in 40 years, like the car show, like all the new ones. Um, I'm going to check that out. I think I'm going to go down there with Dean Del Rey. It's going to be a fucking good time. And uh, I think that's it. Um, happy holidays to all you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. And truly, I know I fuck around a lot on this podcast, but I really appreciate all you guys like watching the movie, watching the club soda, Kenny thing, F is for family, my stand-up specials coming out to shows and all that type of stuff. Um, and I'm enjoying doing all of this stuff more than I have at any point in my career. So uh, if you live in LA, um, I'll probably be popping up doing some spots. All right, that's it. Happy gambling. Don't fight with your wife like I did this morning. You're just going to lose. Uh, take the Iowa under. I don't know about this week, though, because I'm not going to tell you I'm going to fucking jinx it. All right, that's it. Go fuck yourselves. Have a great weekend, you cunts. Enjoy the music and the bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, right after the music. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Monday morning podcast for Monday, November 23rd. 2015, what's going on? How are you? What's up? Oh, Billy Redface. Oh, Billy Redcakes. Oh, fucking, what are you doing? Douchebag. Freckles here is uh, in a great mood. He's on his, for done with his first week and not doing shit. I'm not doing shit for the, the, last week I already did it. I already accomplished the dream of not doing shit. And this week I'm not doing shit, right? Greatest fucking holiday of the year. Everybody talks about Christmas, people talking about Flag Day or fucking Easter. I'm telling you, this is the one. You don't have to buy shit. All you do, you just show up. You show up, little corned beef and cabbage, whatever the, whatever your little family fucking dish is. You show up, you smile, you do a couple of air kisses, you know? Feed your fat fucking face, and then you just slip into the living room, right? And watch the game. Sitting on the sofa. Then there's that other guy, the socially fucking awkward guy who hides in alcohol, sitting in the lazy boy. You know, you guys are angled just enough that you can see each other in your peripheral, but you never say anything. You know, a couple times you go to start the conversation and you see the lonely guy being excited, but then he fucks it up and you see him withdraw again. 
and you try to act like it didn't happen. And that's just the second quarter. All right. Anyways, um, I finally I did my official weigh in today to see the damage I did. I was about a buck sixty five or something before uh, I left to go to a, way back in September. Right. I was trying to get down to one sixty two. I got to one sixty five. And one day I just skipped rope and just sweated it out. I got to like 162 point something, but that's bullshit, right? Got down to 165. Then I had a wedding, a week-long family event. And then right after that, I went to Texas for a week and then Toronto. And I came back for a few days. And then I went to D.C. Then I came back for a few days, like a week. And then I did that two-week fucking tour of uh, the Midwest. Came back for three days. Then I did the Philly run. Then I went to New York and then I did MSG. So in that time, I knew I was putting on weight. Uh, I knew I was doing it. I knew it. I couldn't, I couldn't stop, right? All right. Now, before I started this whole thing, I was 187 pounds. I went down to 165. I lost 22 fucking pounds. So the big question is, Bill, you dumb fuck. After you did all that work, you stupid cunt, how much did you give back this morning? After weighing himself in September, before all the festivities, about 165 pounds, I weighed myself this morning, right when I woke up, the most accurate weight from what I've, you know, read on the internet. So take that with a giant grain of salt and sugar. Uh, 176.8. Oh, Billy, what did you do? I just remember my last night in New York, fucking hammered, eating Two slices of uh, sausage pepperoni, and it wasn't even good. And after the first one, I was like, Jesus, this is so much shit on this. This feels like Chicago pizza where, like, nobody in their, nobody in their right mind ever has more than one slice of deep dish pizza. You just fucking you can't do it. You're, you're out of your fucking mind. So anyways, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm pissed that I fucking went that hard. Fucked it up that much, but I'm not, I didn't see the dreaded, the one that really depresses me is when that second number is an eight. So I'm going to try to do the impossible, the unthinkable. Cleo, will you stop licking yourself so damn loud? Hey, Cleo, Cleo, we, we, yeah, you, knock it off over there. I know you got to do what you got to do. You need a bath? Anyways, the fuck was I talking about? Oh, I'm going to try to do the impossible, the unthinkable. Ah, oh, there she goes, licking herself again. Good Lord, no shame whatsoever. I'm going to try to lose weight during the holiday months here. I'm actually, during the week of Thanksgiving, I'm trying to go, to, my goal is to be, uh, to do the three pounds that I was doing back in the summer, drop three weeks. So that's 173.8 is what I need to be next Monday morning when I roll out of bed and, um, so we'll see what happens. But here's a fucked up thing. I made three pies yesterday. All right. Um, not all for me, obviously. Um, just people come by the house and stuff like that. So I made a cream pie, a pumpkin pie, and an apple pie. And I actually fucked with the sacred family recipes. Now, I haven't had a slice of any of it yet, but I upped the cinnamon in my apple pie. And um, and I used this, this different recipe. It was a butter-based crust. And... Um, my wife sent me a fucking text message. I thought the house was on fire. It was just OMG, 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 OMG. I can't even say it that fast. She fucking, well, say it slower, Bill. We still understand. She wrote OMG like 50 times in a row. So I, was, I had gone. I was driving. So I texted while driving, of course. And I said, pie, question mark, question mark, house fire, question mark. And then she did a bunch of emoji, emoji shit. And uh, she wrote, that pie is fucking delicious. I said, how's the new cinnamon level? She said, perfect. And then I said, yes, with an exclamation point. How about that? You got to hear my whole private text message. <laughs> no, that's the best. Apple pie is a motherfucker. You know? I don't know how you guys do it. I use like three different types of apples. You got to peel them, then you quarter them, then you try to get like eight slices. All right? You slice them nice and thin the way Polly does the garlic and fucking good fellas. And you you got to you got to have your mix ready though, so they don't turn brown. You stick them in there, you swish it around, and all that. You make sure it gets all over the place, and then then the fucking uh, the apples all intermingle. You know what I mean? Like 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 the higher ups don't want us to. Like everybody getting along. I'm fucking with you. I uh, guess what? I went down to the uh, comedy 
store yesterday for the for my first set since uh, my last show in New York. And I went down there, had the best fucking time. I tried out all this new material. And I uh, actually walked into the comedy store and, you know, they have the original room and then they have the main room. The original room is the part of the original club when they just bought half of it. It used to be a nightclub called Ciro's. And uh, where the original room sits, I think, was the back of the main room. So, um, anyways, whatever. Come out to L.A. Just walk in. Take a look at it. So I go, what's going on in the main room? And they go, Dick Gregory. I go, what? They go, Dick Gregory. I go, Dick Gregory is on stage right now? And they were like, yeah. And I went in there, and the guy was fucking hilarious. Still funny as hell. Still edgy. Talking about topical stuff. He was talking about Paris. He was talking about all this just... Right up to date stuff. Um, he was fucking amazing. So that gave me a charge. So then I go into the the, uh, the original room. They bring me up. I start doing my thing. Everything's going great. You know? I did my little wage gap gift uh, uh, joke. And then I get off stage. Thanks a lot. And uh, all of a sudden this lady. She comes up to me. And then she just wants to present her case. She's like, you know, well, actually, I'm in my mid-30s, and now I, I'm at an age now that when I go out with a guy, he, he wants to go Dutch. He expects me to pay for half. And then I just go, well, yeah, you should. You know? You should. I don't think it's asking too much. You're in your 30s. You've demonstrated that you're not a first-round draft pick at this point. You know, you're fucked up like me. So... I know I'm fucked up. I know you're fucked up or maybe too driven to commit to anything. So, you know, we got to keep each other at arm's length here. Right. So I pay for my shit. You pay for your shit. I couldn't be like I couldn't even listen to like that's that's your big fucking complaint in life that for the first 30 years you got free fucking food and drinks. Like as a guy, do you know how far back into my life I got them? They, they get to live like eight year olds. Remember when you were a kid, you just walked around. As a kid, you had no money. You went out with your parents. You had a whole fucking day. You ate. You had drinks. You fucking, no, not booze, but, you know, got yourself a high C, whatever the hell you had. You know, went to a ball game, whatever. You never went in your pockets. The life of a kid, you know? You essentially, not, not like, look, I obviously know women don't just not pay for fucking anything, but I'm just saying that when they get courted, you know? You don't have to pay for shit, generally speaking. Right? So anyway, so she comes up to me. And I just didn't want to fucking hear it. And uh, I made the mistake. I treated her like a guy, and I feel bad. I just completely, I just gave her shit. And then she was like, oh, you're being mean and everything. I'm like, it's a comedy club. We're comedians. This is what we do. And then she wanted to make her fucking point, And I just, you know, I said, all right. And I just walked away. And... Then, of course, I made the mistake of asking another comic. I go, was I just too mean there? And he's like, yeah, no, no. Comedian will never say you're too mean. They're like, no, no, say, you know, seemed about right. Felt like the, uh, the right level of it. <clears throat> um, that's a pet peeve of mine. I don't like when I'm standing on stage and you could heckle me while I'm making my point. Instead, you don't. You wait till I get off stage and then you want to have some fucking, you know, Charlie Rose conversation about what the fuck you think of the show. I don't give a shit at that point. I, you know, I would much rather that you yell out during my show. Like, hey, I'm in my 30s. I got to pay for a date that we could have had that hilarious conversation, a little back and forth. But instead, you know, I got to get off stage and then you come up to me like I'm being debriefed after my shift. You know what I mean? See where I went right, see where I went wrong. Like, I don't want to fucking hear that. But you're more than welcome to heckle me. I don't give a shit. I don't care about that, you know? I'm up there. It's me in the mic stand. You know, I feel safe. <laughs> ah, who's kidding you? I was probably too much of an asshole. What do, you, what, do you, what do you want from me? So anyways, what the fuck happened to my LSU Tigers? Jesus Christ. I know I was on the road a lot this year, so I missed most of the season. But I watched the end of the Alabama game. They lost that game, and the fucking wheels fell off. Then they got their asses kicked by Arkansas. Who even knew they still had a football program out there? I mean, it's Arkansas. When was the last time you even heard of that state? 
Bill Clinton was in office, and that was only in the first term. The former governor of Little Rock, Arkansas. All right? And by the time he got to his second term, they phased out Arkansas. Like the older brother on Happy Days, right? No more Chuck. Now he's at school. Now he doesn't exist. Right? How the fuck do you lose to them? They're not in the Midwest. They're not in the South. They're just there. The name of their capital? Little Rock. It's got little. How does, he, how does your capital have little in it? Unbelievable. We fucking lose to them. What, what, I mean, what even goes on in Arkansas? For some reason, when I think of Arkansas, you know what I think of? I think of like an Oldsmobile 442. Like a 65 for some reason, you know? And they're riding around. I bet they're all driving around old cars. Like Cuba. You know? Like that embargo hit them real hard too, even though there's no embargo on them. But they're just Arkansas. How the fuck do you lose to Arkansas? Um, I'm just waiting for those fucking... Arkansas SEC people. Actually, we're fucking seven and one of the in the conference. I don't care. And then who the fuck did they play this past week? Uh, Ole Miss. You know, right down there on the goal line, and one guy thinks it's a fake play. The other guy is trying to hand it off to him. It was fucking Keystone Cops. Keystone Cops. This is what kills me. They'll probably end up getting rid of less miles. You know what I mean? I love that one bad fucking year, and then all of a sudden you don't know how to coach anymore. You watch. They'll run them right out. You know, somebody, somebody's got to answer to this. Nobody can just, just be like, you know what? We had a bad fucking year. It's got to be like, oh, you know what? That's it. You're done. You don't know how to do this anymore. Does that happen at your guys' jobs? You know what I mean? Say you're working at Staples, right? And you're fucking, uh, you, you're going down to the, the aisle with the three-ring binders, and you think they're on the left-hand side, they're on the right-hand side. And then they go, you know what? You just can't do it anymore. That's it. It's over. You've been here for fucking... Four years. I don't think you know how to work at Staples anymore. I know I'm, 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 I guess I'm belittling both people, belittling that job and also belittling the job of working at Staples. I think the job at Staples is the big thing is you hide in the back room because they have so little people on the floor. If you walk out on the floor, everybody's going to ask you a question, right? You're going to walk out. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Sir. Sir, yes. Could you tell me where? My daughter's eighth birthday is coming up, and we want different colored paper clips. Do you know what I thought? That's when you should legally be able to just grab somebody by the back of the head and steer them towards where they need to be, you know? And then, like, push their head down to see where it is on the shelf. And then as you go to let go, you give them that little push before you do. It causes them to do that half a step and put their hands out like a toddler about ready to fall. Um, anyways... Um, I barely watched any football yesterday. I got a couple of things done that uh, were hanging over my head that were going to cause me to not enjoy my fucking holidays. Um, I am now at the age that somebody asked me to write a letter of recommendation for this fucking thing, and uh, I just kept putting it off and putting it off. And I was like, you know, Bill, this person is trying to get on with their life here. So I just sat down and fucking forced all my ADD away. You know, I opened the email, but I looked at a bunch of other emails first. I gradually closed all the windows and uh, I missed all the one o'clock games. I caught the tail end of the Cowboys game. I was psyched for the Cowboys. How fucking nuts is it that they're undefeated with Tony Romo, but they're 10 games in. It's just a fucking tragedy. They were two and oh, Tony breaks, gets his fucking collarbone broken. They lose seven in a row. They go O for fucking seven. Then Tony comes back. Boom. It's like he never left. You know, like that old friend you don't see for 20 fucking years and you see each other, you just start laughing. You pick up right where you left off. Tony Romo. Tony Romo. You know, I want to hear the Cowboy fans bitch about him now. Huh? There you go. You got what you wanted. You got Tony out of the fucking lineup, and look what happened. O for fucking seven. So now he's back, and what I love is the fucking NFC East sucks so bad that they could actually go on a run and still win the division. You know? That's what's killing me about the Giants right now because I, I told you I never want to see the Giants again. I don't give a fuck that we beat them in the regular season. It doesn't matter. I can't, I can't, I, I can't handle another... I can handle another Super Bowl loss. I can't handle another loss the way we lose to the Giants. I just can't do it. 
you know. Tony Romo fades back to pass, and Shu comes up. He throws the shoe by accident, and everybody goes after the shoe and take. He's running with the football. He's at the 30, the 20, it's an unbelievable touchdown. Fuck that. I, I, can't, I can't watch another one of those. John Brady back to pass. He's got to throw it fucking half a yard to Wes Welker. He drops the ball. I can't, de- I can't, I don't even want to fucking deal with that. And this is what kills me. The Giants, who absolutely, have absolutely shit the bed this year, are in first place, I think, with like a fucking, you know, four and six record or something. You know, I could just go on the internet and I could look this shit up or I could just wing it. Um, no, who's kidding who? I would love to play the Giants again uh, as long as we win. You know, <laughs> to try to, but I, you know, if it was like going to be a 50 50, be like, yeah, you know, I don't need to go through that emotionally anymore. I really don't. It fucking kills me how much these stupid losses, you know, I never get a ring. They don't ask me to get on the duck boats for the parade, do they? Why the fuck do I care? Why am I absolutely elated that the Bruins have won two games in a row right now? Huh? I don't know. I have no idea. Second win, big win against the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. I've been at home getting caught up with them. You know, they look all right. Last couple of games, they look all right. Definitely up and down season. Um, so, I don't know. I won't pack it in until, uh, like, February. And in February, they're still doing this stuff. Then you start getting those awful feelings like you almost want your team to lose so they get a better draft pick. Um, but uh, I can't. I can't fucking do that. But anyways. Oh, did I miss it yesterday? Did the Islanders and uh, Canadians play? Joe Bartnick from Puck Off told me that there was going to be bad blood. There's going to be some bad blood in that game. I think I fucking missed it. So anyways, but the big game tonight is Patriots versus the Bills. So um, I'm going to try to do my best to get in front of a TV so I can listen to Bills fans talking shit again uh, about what they're going to do, what we should have done. Right? They're going to get all like, fuck, we're going to kick your fucking ass. I already got a text from somebody. So one of my friends out there, I think the Shred and Reagan show, they texted me going, the Patriots are going to get their asses whipped. And I just wrote back, uh, who are they playing? <laughs> he goes, they're playing the Bills, this year's Super Bowl champion. And I just wrote back, I said, well, it should be a great game. You guys have a wonderful defense. Good luck. <laughs> Just diffuses all of the shit talk. Why is like why are you talking shit? You know what I mean, dude? They're gonna fucking come in there. Fucking, he's gonna do it. He's gonna fucking. And what if he doesn't? And what if he does? What are you gonna do, huh? You gonna sit there and grow your man tits with me? You don't wanna fucking do it. You know when I was watching the Bruins game, I was so disgusted with myself. Um, I had this workout for like the last two periods. Every five minutes of the game, I would do 25 push-ups. Um, it's an easy way to do 200. You know what I mean? You get nice long rests depending on uh, how many penalties are called and commercial breaks. Just every five minutes, you bang out 25. I got to do something, guys. I made three fucking pies. I'm in trouble here. Um, but the key is I haven't had one yet, so I, I don't have the crack rolling around in my fucking system. All right. Here we go. Let me do some reads here for this fucking weekend. Of course, I got to type in my fucking podcast. My, pod, my password, sorry. See that? I can't do two things at once like, like the women can. Like the ladies. Um, all right, where the fuck is it? Mm-mm-mm. Oh, here we go. The old favorites here. We only got a couple this week. All right. All right. I got a couple of, uh, couple of things I need to uh, announce here. Uh, the fourth annual Patrice O'Neill. Comedy benefit. I want to thank everybody that bought tickets for this thing. It, the tickets are selling uh, faster than ever. And that just reminded me what the MeUndies thing, the stocking stuffer. It makes a great stocking stuffer. All right. Um, you get to see some of the top comics in the country honoring the greatest comic I ever saw live and uh, honoring his memory and helping out his loved ones. Uh, it's going to be at the New York City Center on Tuesday, January 26th. You know? You just go to the friggin' website. I'll, I'll retweet the link once again today. I got the date up on my website, the whole damn thing. Um, the great thing about this, great gift to get for somebody. And all you got to do, go on the internet, click, 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 bing, bang, boom, you're done. Stick it in the stocking, and then you can go right over to spiking your eggnog. 
All right? And then also, an old friend of mine has a new album coming out. If you guys like Straight Ahead Blues, someone that can absolutely fucking shred on the guitar and has a fucking voice to match, Felicia Collins um, has a new album out called Felicia Collins Discovers the Blues. Straight Ahead Blues album. She sent me a couple of the tracks. Me and Bartnick were listening to it the other night. We, uh, Bartnick was over here watching uh, Chicago, Vancouver, and um, absolutely blown away. Um, for those of you David Letterman fans, uh, she played in the uh, CBS Orchestra, and uh, she was actually there when they were way back when they were on NBC. And um, so obviously the show's over, and now she's stretching out. So check it out Tuesday, Felicia Collins' new album. The Felicia, Felicia Collins discovers the blues. Um, all right. And what else do I got coming up? I have, um, of course, F is for Family is out on December 18th. And, um, oh, and Pete Corielli is going to be a guest on the Thursday afternoon podcast just before Friday next week to promote, uh, I believe, his new stand-up special on uh, Showtime, which I heard is getting rave reviews. He's one of my favorite comics of all time, and he's a great guy to go and see before he fucking blows up because he's that level funny. Um, all right, and with that, with that babbling, let's march on here with the podcast. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I gotta, I'm going to go to the fucking gym today. The second I do this, so this is my game plan. I'm going to do... An hour on the elliptical today, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, I'm doing the Joe, Joe Rogan's podcast on Tuesday, tomorrow. So uh, I might bring some of that pie that I made over to him, you know, which would be a cool thing to do for the holidays. Plus, then I don't have it around here, so I'm not fucking eating it, right? And then all they do is eat one. I think that could work, right? You got to give away some of it. Um, but I'm going to do, yeah, three hours of that by Thanksgiving. My one bad day is going to be Thanksgiving. And then I'm just going to try to, uh, I got to turn around, guys. If I go back up to the 180s, I'm going to be so fucking depressed. I just don't want to be that fucking guy at the start of the year. Like, oh, I'm going to fucking, here we go. I'm going to fucking get in shape, you know? You know what that's like? You know it's like starting your year as a fat fuck who's got to drop like fucking 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 fucking pounds. It's the worst. Why not get started now and not do the fucking damage? You know what I mean? You know that awesome feeling you get, you know, if before you go to work you make the bed and you come home and the bed's made? You know that fucking feeling? Or maybe the night before you did all the dishes and you wake up to make breakfast and there's no dishes from the night before? That, that, that ahead of the game feeling, you know, or at least I'm even. You know what I mean? Like I don't got to start my day doing yesterday's bullshit plus whatever the fuck hits me today. Um... That's what it's like to be on January 1st to actually be in shape. And I don't think I've, I've done that since my 20s. So um, I'm really going to try. It and uh, it always helps me to announce it on the podcast that I'm going to fucking do it. Because I know you guys will fucking, you guys are going to check in on me. And you're going to give me shit when I, you know if I'm not talking about it, you know I'm not doing well. And God knows you guys like to be mean. But I probably deserve it after what a cunt I was to that lady last night. I wasn't even a cunt. It's just the fact that she's a woman and you're just supposed to, you know, you're just supposed to let them win. Be like, oh, wow, wow, yeah, you, 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 and you. Yeah, that's exactly what the joke was about. It was all about you. All of you. Why not talk about all of you? You're so interesting. Please tell me another story about your dumb day and what you said and, oh, my God, what you were like. So I said this and then she said that and then I was like... Ladies, how do you not see the pain in your man's face when you're doing that? You know what I mean? I see the pain in my wife's face when I try to talk to her about a game. Man, it was fucking two minutes left, right? Patriots are getting killed on defense, right? We get the ball back. Tom Brady throws the ball. Giant guy grabs and he fucking lands on his stomach, knocks his wind out. And by then, it's just fucking over. She just starts making fun of me. Really? Oh, my God. Oh, that's amazing. She doesn't give a fuck. You know? But if I don't listen to her fucking stories, oh, Jesus. Oh, forget about it. It's a big goddamn... I don't know what it is. Um, anyways, let's get to some of the reads for this week, okay? Yeah, Bill, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Oh, I'm doing the comedy jam tonight. All right, with the fucking... The fucking text messages there. Um, let's read the text message. Oh, is that somebody else who saw the F is for family? 
Yeah. They saw the trailer. People are liking the trailer. Thank Christ. All right. Uh, venue. Dear Billy Big Shot, now that you've done the mother of all venues with MSG, what non-traditional venue would you like to play? Like something like the Great Wall of China? Congrats on your year. Go fuck yourself. Um, no, there's still, a, there's still a bunch that I would love to play. Uh, Royal Albert Hall is on my bucket list. Um, and, and then there's also there's a bunch of theaters that I would still like to play or continue playing. There's the one on out here in California in Long Beach, the Long Beach something or other, where Richard Pryor did his uh, live in concert. Um, I already did a show at the Palladium. That's where he did live on the Sunset Strip. And I forget if the, the one that he performed at when he did his Here and Now, which I think was in uh, New Orleans. I got to see if that one still exists. But I really, uh, I like doing those old theaters. I like doing them. Man. It's like going to old ballparks and you hear all the people that were there. Like last night when we were down the... Um, the comedy store, there's, there's just characters just show up, right? Dick Gregory's on stage, and then this other guy comes in because he knew Dick Gregory. He was the publicist for Ciro's. There was this nightclub, I said, before it became uh, the comedy store. And, uh, you know, when Frank, Dean, Sammy, and all them were down there, he was just naming all of these fucking names. He, he said, yeah, he goes, I first came here in 1950. So I'm immediately doing the math going, Jesus Christ, if this guy was like, 20 in 1950 that's 65 fucking years ago he's 85 um he didn't look like he was in his 80s he actually looked great but um so let's see what venue you know red rocks i performed there though but i i i did red rocks when it was uh there was some sort of animation thing going on after it so wendy at the comic comedy works uh got me the gig and we went out there but it was cool to be at red rocks but uh they weren't there for me they were there for the fucking film so there was a lot of chatter but um a lot of the things on my bucket list are venues that um that either bands played in that i love and had some live album there or comedians that did uh a special there so I told you when I was in Hammertown there up in fucking uh, Toronto, Ontario. I mean, in Ontario, not Toronto. Um, they just kept calling it Hammertown. I can't even remember the name of the town, but it's south of Toronto. I didn't realize I performed until after I was there. I performed at the theater where Bill Cosby did Bill Cosby himself. Um, arguably the greatest special of all time. You know, now what he did afterwards, I don't want to get involved in that. <laughs> um so that was cool. Um, I did. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. I, I just want to keep uh, going. I like going to venues that I've never been to. You know what I really enjoyed this year is when I was doing the tour of California, going to Reno and Bakersfield and uh, Fresno, and they were along the old school highways where people were psyched. Like the highway went right down Main Street, so they would have some big fancy sign you know, Reno, biggest little town in, uh, you know, the West, Fresno, you know, whatever the fuck their slogan is, you know, they would always have like town and then some sort of slogan, Bakersfield, like, hey, stop and stay a while, you know, some corny shit, but um, I really like that Route 66 type of stuff, and uh, as far as Europe goes, that's to me is all about World War II, World War I, um, those, you know, those types of places, but as far as performing, I don't know enough about Europe and that type of thing. Uh, I did look up, you know, ACDC, where they recorded uh, If You Want Blood, their live album. That was a place, I believe it was in Glasgow or uh, Edinburgh. I want to say Glasgow, but uh, the venue doesn't exist anymore. So, um, yeah, so that I would say that. I get a big charge at a, a music place because I'm a you know, total nerd when it comes to that shit. And uh, I remember when I was in England... London uh, a couple years ago accidentally coming upon that Ronnie Scott's and I saw Jeff Beck have one of the great fucking was him Vinnie Colaiuta and that chick on bass and they just were fucking unbelievable like Jimmy Page was in the crowd you know sinking down in his seat like oh yeah I stole that riff I remember stealing that one from him nicking it I believe as they call it so yeah there's still plenty 
um, left. And um, the MSG for me was not as much as it was a high water mark. It wasn't like this, you know. And now I just slide down the back nine for me. It was. Uh, it just felt more like an honor to be there. And it was mine for an hour and a half. And then, you know, the second you leave, somebody else's name was on the marquee. And it's like, wow, I got to do that. Um, but I got to tell you, I had just as much fun uh, fucking around with the new stuff, you know. It's hard to describe unless you're a comedian, the excitement of new stuff. Like, oh, I get to say new shit. I have to keep saying this stuff and trying to figure out how to make this fucking new again tonight. Um, so... Anyways, so yeah, I would say Royal Albert Hall is like the next one I'm really thinking about. But there's no way there isn't something in Ireland or something in Scotland or uh, Finland, Norway. I mean, I think I'm doing a tour of the uh, the fucking um, Eastern Europe. Be crazy to play a venue that like fucking like Hitler or Stalin or Mussolini, one of those fascists. Well, now I guess Stalin wasn't a fascist, but one of those fucking maniacs gave his speech, and you know it still exists. You know, <laughs> fucking nuts, right? I don't know. All right, baking. Hey, Bill. Uh, bacon, Bill. I'm thinking about surprising my girlfriend and her family by bringing over a homemade pie for Thanksgiving. All right, dude, I got you. I'm going to make two pies because one isn't enough. I'm thinking about apple and pumpkin. Also, because, also, please know that apple capitalizes apple as if there's no such thing as fruit. Oh, the Apple Company. Anyways, I know uh, from previous years that you're killing it in the kitchen. Oh, thank you. Before I call my mom and, her two, and get her two cents uh, from you, can I get some pointers, some basic do's and don'ts uh, when getting into it? Should I avoid either apple, the fruit, uh, or pumpkin? Thanks. Um, pumpkin pie is an, an easy re- recipe. Apple pies work as far as the filling. But it's also, fuck, you know, it's apples and cinnamon, man. I mean, come on. Um, I'll give you the, the biggest, like, the filling is, the, is easy, all right? The, the thing that scares and intimidates people is doing the, uh, oh, my God, guys. Do I have to make a fucking pie crust making video? I'll fucking do it. I'll put on the apron. I'll put on the apron and a silly hat. You want the, I'll do that for you for fucking Thanksgiving. How about that? I will make a fucking pie video. Um, pie crust video, uh, but if you're going to do it right now, uh, cause I won't get the video up in time, I will, sh- I will show you, uh, I'll try to walk you through it. All right. So the recipe that I use, it's two cups of all purpose flour, the kinds that people say, you know, you're going to die if you eat it. That's what you want. With the pie, you don't want to go any low fat. You don't want to go wheat. You don't want to do any of that fucking stinky feet Seattle thing up with it, all right? You want to go Midwest Chicago heart attack, all right? You're making a pie. You want to be healthy? Go have a fucking salad. That's not what we're doing here. That's not what we're... Stop your crying and get out of my kitchen! Right? You know, it's funny. There's roofers fixing something on my fucking roof that's never going to be fixed. And they probably just heard me yell that. Now stop your crying and get out of my kitchen. You know? That's how rumors start. I know that guy. That guy tells jokes. Yeah, he's fucking verbally abusive to his wife. Um, Anyway, so what you want to do is you uh, two cups of flour, okay? And you get yourself a sifter, right? And there's always a little bit of salt. Go easy on the salt, like an eighth of a teaspoon. So what I do is I take the cup of fucking flour... I pour it into the sifter, and the sifter is sitting in the bowl that you're going to sift into. Don't just pour it into the sifter. It's going to end up on your counter. You don't want that, right? So you pour in one cup, then you put in your salt, then you put your next cup over it. Then you sift it, right? It comes fucking out. Then, uh, and then you add your shortening, right? I use a stick of butter. Sorry. You want it to be cold so it's not too fucking mushy. Uh, take it out of the fridge. You just cut it up. And like, you know, eighth of an inch slices, you put it in there and then with your little fucking thing that you hit, see, this is why I'm going to have to do a video. You just, you want to cover it, right? And then you put your shortening in and then cover that. You want it to be all like, uh, like you're making a fucking meatball. You want to get the breadcrumbs all over, except it's the flour. And then when you do that, you just lightly tap all the way around, you know, you're letting that shortening start kind of get into it. 
Then you go a little harder, a little harder. Gets a little mealy. Once it's a little mealy, you start adding your water. I got to make a video. I got to make a video. And I can also show you how much you can fuck up a crust and still save it. And uh, uh, you know what? I got to do it. I'll actually do that. But as far, listen, man, pumpkin pie is great. But if you want to knock people on their ass, you got to make an apple pie. And I get three different types of apples. Uh, throw a Granny Smith in there so you got a bitter thing and then something else for a little sweeter taste. You know, a little surf and turf going on in there. And uh, you just make sure you use enough cinnamon. You know what I mean? I use about a half, a healthy half a teaspoon. What has happened to me? I'm literally just sitting here talking about this shit like I'm about, like it's just a fucking game plan to win the fucking football game tonight. Um, all right. So anyways, ho- holiday wedding. Uh, Billy Bells, my friend from college is getting married uh, this Sunday after Christmas. Ah, oh, Jesus, what a stupid time to do that. Was well, it because everybody's in your hometown? He goes, is there a worse time for a wedding? No. Can you believe that it's in upstate New York? Of course I can. If he's going to be a cunt, he's going to go all the way with it. I'm sure it'd be fun once I got there, but I'm thinking about skipping. The circumstances are grounds for not going, right? Absolutely they are. Fuck that. Fuck that. You know what I mean? I always think that when people do shit like that anyways, it means one of two things. They're kind of hoping most people won't show up. Or two, they don't have enough money to throw a good wedding anyway. So all that great food, you're going to walk away from that to go up there and fucking eat hamburger helper, you know, standing out on the stage, eating on you know, the fucking dance floor, eating a steak em. Celebrate good times, come on. Boo, doo, 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 doo. And you know one of your friends is going to cancel last second that agreed to go, and you're going to fucking show up there. Wahoo! There's some shit food being served right here now. Some fucking shitty food that's going to come out your ass. Yeah, fuck that. Fuck that. And he can never give you shit. All you got to do for the rest of your life when he gives you shit or she gives you shit or whatever about not going, just, you just, you don't, you're sitting at the bar and they're fucking ran, 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 you're fucking here. You don't, you just keep looking straight ahead and you just put, throw your hands out and you just go, you got married on the Sunday after Christmas. Who does that? That's it. And as they try to defend it, you just talk over. Married? The Sunday after Christmas. When? The Sunday after Christmas. It's almost like he didn't want me to be there. Huh? If you get divorced, when are you going to get married this time? Fucking New Year's Day? The fuck out of here. What do you think? You're better than Santa Claus? You're better than the baby Jesus? Huh? You think you're better than the prime rib my mother makes on Christmas Day, you motherfucker? Where the fuck do you get to upstate New York? How dare you? I'm going to be that fucking person driving in a station wagon. Fucking Sunday after Christmas. Get the fuck. This, this is like my time off. This is my time off. This is my time. Okay? I'm going to go to a goddamn wedding. Oh, that just reeks of like my friend got ordained as a fucking preacher. He's going to go up there in his fucking street clothes. Oh, yeah. I bet they're getting married in, like, the basement of a fucking Holiday Inn. And the ceremony's going to be going, and the, the door to the function room's still going to be open, and people are going to be randomly walking by looking at it. You know? they got to keep the door open because there's no bathroom in the function room, so you got to walk out. Oh, that's a shit show. Jesus Christ, dude. That's like, uh, that's like a sales meeting you don't want to go to. Well, you know what? I've convinced myself that I wouldn't go. I don't know what you're thinking, but um, I wouldn't go. That's totally grounds for skipping. A wedding alone is grounds for skipping. Who the fuck wants to go to that? Unless you're still in your 20s, and then, you know, then it's a good time. You want to go to a wedding single, right? Go there, maybe bang somebody, right? Have a good time. But you don't want to go there. You know, if you're not married, then eventually she's going to look up. When are we going to do this? Ugh. No, you think of it just fucking running, doing a running jump right off the balcony. All right, sleep trouble. Sleep trouble. 
All right. Uh, hey, Bill, I just started traveling for work and getting a good night and getting a good night's sleep is brutal. Yes, it is. I'm not trying Ambien or increasing my alcohol intake. How do you deal with all the travel uh, alcohol? Uh, do you use uh, one of those stupid neck pillows? Nope. Hotel beds aren't bad. If I do sleep well, I end up waking up feeling comatose, which leads me to being more tired because those beds are huge and soft and I don't want to get out of bed. You're also making up for the sleep that you didn't get on other nights, which you can't really do. You know, there's that weird thing that if, like, say, you know, you got six hours one night and then 10 hours the next night, so you got, you know, it averages out to eight hours. It still doesn't work that way for some reason. Um, You can't retroactively, like, when you miss out on whatever it is you need. Some people only need six. Some people just need four. But if you need, like... Whatever the fuck you need, I'm saying if you come up short, you can't just sleep extra one day and then even it off. It usually takes like a week. Like I've been fucking sleeping this whole week, um, falling asleep like an old person. So, um, but anyways, let me continue. Um, and I don't want to get out of the bed. It, ha- it hasn't happened yet, but I can see it's slowly turning me into a grouchy asshole. How do you do it? Were you a cheery fellow before hitting the road? <laughs> Thanks for the free laughs. Um, how do I do it? I'm German Irish. That's how I do it. Um, we're not in touch with our feelings, so even if I am tired, I'm just naturally trained to block it out, and I just get up and um, and I go. But however, every once in a while, when I do make a conscious effort to think about slowing down and relaxing and not having something to achieve every fucking day, be it picking up dry cleaning or writing a new joke, um, I suddenly become aware of how tired I am. So um, what I would do, yeah, is not, not, uh, not use any of the drugs. And I also wouldn't fuck with alcohol. I wouldn't do that either. What I would do is work out in the morning and then go to your job, whatever it is that you do. And then at night, because you were working all day and you worked out, you'll actually go to sleep. If you just get into the good habits out there, it's not that bad. But um, I don't know. Biggest thing that I found is, is food. Food is difficult. And uh, if you're doing like a bunch of one-nighters, if you're like a traveling salesman kind of fucking thing, selling your widgets or whatever, that's when it gets hard because you spend your day traveling and then you arrive at the hotel. You're fucking hungry, but you got to go to your gig. So you usually end up, you know, you're like, hey, do you guys have anything healthy? Like, we got an Applebee's. Oh, yeah, do they deliver? Yeah, they, yeah, they sure don't. They sure don't. Nodding yes, they sure don't. You should shake your head no. Can I get what I need? You sure can't. Not in this town. So then, you, then they always have, like, fucking menus, and they're always going to give you some Chinese food. Which is just is going to be unfucking believable or absolutely horrific, depending on uh, you know it has nothing to do with where you're at. Every fucking town in the United States has Chinese food, I believe, and every town has a Chinese family that moved there, right? For the most part, or at least within two towns, there's a Chinese family that moved there, and they will make that fucking food. Now, whether or not they're People from China that know how to cook, that's the fucking rub. You know, if you never know, you've ever noticed that? I've been in the middle of fucking Kansas. And I got some of the best sushi I've ever had. Japanese family, middle of fucking Kansas. It's like, how did you end up out here? This is unbelievable. I, I, most of the white people I know didn't end up out here. How did you, uh, from Japan, end up in Olathe fucking <laughs> Kansas? Oh, speaking of bucket list, man, I have like a bunch of college basketball games I want to go to. I want to go to Kentucky. I've always been a Kansas fan. I don't know why. I want to go to their their facility. I want to go to a Duke-Carolina game at Carolina and at Duke. Um, I've been to UCLA. Who else is a big basketball program? Georgetown, Syracuse. You know, the Red Men, St. John's Red Men, whatever the fuck they're called now, the Red Storm. I grew up on Big East basketball, but uh, 
I used to love watching all of that shit. So I've been to Indiana. I told you guys I went to an uh, Indiana University uh, University basketball game when Bobby Knight was still on the team. I, I was I could not fucking believe the level at which that guy was screaming at his players. It was insane. Coming all the way out and his fucking head just snapping. As a point, like they let up an easy bucket, and the point guard was bringing it up the court. And the fucking guy, I swear to God, he walked like ten feet out onto the court. Everybody was just like intimidated by him. I just, it just annoyed me. I wanted to see like somebody stand up to him, you know, give the guy a nice verbal fucking slap. Uh, but it never happened. That guy, classic example, ego completely out of fucking control. Um, when he started buying into being Bobby Knight, and he started doing those. I'm going to be Bobby Knight. You know, what is, what is a game face? I never understood that. And he starts mugging to the camera. Or when he goes, uh, you know, I hope when my critics bury me, they bury me face down so they can kiss my ass. I was like, oh, God, shut up. Have another drink. Um, <laughs> did I just make fun of Bobby Knight? I mean, what, what the fuck is wrong with me? Um, yeah, so I'm doing the goddamn comedy jam tonight at the, uh, I believe it's the Lyric Theater on uh, La Brea. And um, looking forward to doing that. I got, yeah, I don't want to tell you guys. I got nothing else. I can't even do a fucking hour. That's, that's how little I've been doing this week. I got caught up on Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. I don't know nothing about no robbery. Um, Peaky Blinders with subtitles. Uh, I'm up to the uh, first episode of season two. So I'm going to blow through that this week. And then my wife is watching Bloodline. I believe that's the name of it with... Uh, Norbert Leo Butts, who I did a failed pilot with a long time ago, and uh, he's a fucking great guy. And I keep walking in there, and he's absolutely crushing every scene. And uh, so I, I got to watch it out of solidarity. Um, we actually, a long time ago, did a fucking pilot. Did I ever tell you guys this fucking story? We did a pilot, and they wanted edgy. All right. I thought I told you guys this one. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? Um, They wanted edgy. Okay? It was, you know, and they were letting us go really far. And the, uh, the pilot name was Playing Chicken was the name of this pilot. And the premise was um, me and Norbert were brothers. He was Republican and I was Democrat. And Norbert's character was paralyzed from the waist down and he was paralyzed because he was playing chicken on a fucking jet ski and neither person turned away and he got paralyzed. So that's what's the name of it. So that's already the fucking premise. So he was like over the top, fuck homeless people and all that shit. So anyway, so we're doing, you know, whatever they write this edgy fucking pilot and, um, Right as we're about ready to do the fucking run through where all the fucking major network guys come down. It's basically you do. It's basically it's like a live play. All right. Let me just give you a little back. Basically, what happens is if you're on a sitcom, you have the table read on Monday. Right. If it kills, you go upstairs and you do a bunch of blocking in the fake living rooms and all that, which is basically I'm going to stand over here when I do this. You go through the whole fucking thing. If it bombs. And they know that they're going to rewrite a lot of shit. You have a quick fucking day. Like, well, th- we're going to get a new script tonight. And this will be, you know, a little bit different. So then Tuesday comes around. You fucking rehearse it. You still got your script in hand. And then you do a run through. And it's just for the uh, the production company. Like the whoever's, you know, making the thing. So it's, that's friendly fire there. You know, those are like the executive producers and the people that wrote it. The writers and all that. So they watch it. And they see what's working, what isn't, what needs to be fixed, what can stay the same, what they can add on to. And then Wednesday is the network run through. And that's when the people that can cancel your fucking show show up and leave their sense of humor at the fucking door. Right. So that's always a nerve wracking fucking day. And you go out there and if you do a couple lines, they don't get laughs. You start getting in your head like you're going to get fired, you know. And as you're walking from one fake living room to the fake bar or coffee house that you hang out, the only sound you hear is the shoes of the fucking executives walking over to the next fucking, (laughs) the next scene. So anyway, so we're doing this fucking pilot and the opening scene is we're sitting there at some ice cream place eating ice cream. 
And this homeless guy, whatever, we're having a back and forth, and this homeless guy comes up and asks for money. So I, of course, being the liberal, go to give some money. And Norbert's character being the conservative guy, you know, basically tells the guy to fuck off. So everybody's loving it. He actually, I remember, flicked ice cream at him. Um, oh, he decided he was going to do that during the fucking run through because we weren't going to do it all day long, flicking ice cream at him, be a fucking mess. So we, he just kept miming, flicking the ice cream. That's what it was. So anyways, people are digging the pilot, you know, the producers and all the writers are all thinking it's funny. They're laughing it up. We do the regular run through. It's going great. So now we got the network run through, but the next day, and it just so happens that during that week or whatever, Don Imus said the nappy headed hose fucking comment and for whatever reason all hell fucking breaks loose like you know hitler's back and um it becomes this big fucking lightning rod thing that allows a bunch of people who don't you know want to increase the fines with the fcc and all this shit all basically what this one guy said on the radio trickles all the way down to our pilot that has these fucking suits nervous, you know, just in general about we better watch our step because Don Imus, I don't know what, lost some advertising money. So they're in that fucking headspace and they come down to our show where we got a half paralyzed guy, you know, and the opening scene, we're doing the scene. It's getting zero laughs. And I remember the homeless guy walked out and they even gasped at that because they really made him look homeless. He was really dirty. <laughs> Norbert goes, all the jokes are bombing. And he goes and turns around and flips this fucking glob of ice cream and hits the actor right in the face. And they gasped. And no laugh. I mean, I thought it was going to kill. We thought it was the funniest shit ever. They, there wasn't a fucking, they, they just gasped. And then it ended, right? And then just the sound of their shoes just shuffling all the way down to the other side of the set for the next fucking scene. And, it, dude, it was the worst run-through I've ever been in. I'm talking, there was zero laughs. It was dead fucking silence. And I just remember walking by this one actress. She delivered her line, and it got nothing. And she walked by looking at me like, what the fuck is happening? And I almost bursted out laughing because... For actors, it's like, fuck, I'm going to get fired and I'm going to be unemployed again. For a comedian, I can still, I'm not, I'm not unemployed. I can just go back to doing shows. The fact that I'm on this thing is, is gravy. So the look on her face was just, I mean, I don't want her to be out of work, but it was just funny to me. So the more it was bombing, the, the harder I committed to what I was doing. Just because if you're going to bomb, you might as well just fucking do the triple Lindy. So I was just going bigger, and it just was just dead fucking silence. So the run-through ends. I mean, you can hear a fucking pin drop. And it was to the point, I was like, dude, I didn't think they're going to shoot this fucking thing. So me and Norbert went back to the hotel. We go right to the bar, and we just start laughing, going, I'm getting fired. He's going, no, I'm getting fired. And we had like a bet. Who's going to get fired? It's like somebody's going down for that. It's like, you know, like LSU loses three in a row. Somebody's got to pay the price. Somebody's getting fucking fired. So um, they ended up uh, showing up and they talked to both of us individually in, the, uh, in our hotel rooms. And I remember the guy that directed the thing. He came walking into my room and just sat down on my bed and started eating the peanuts my peanuts without asking. And I was the most arrogant thing I'd ever seen in my life. I was just sitting there going like, it still bugs me to this day. I didn't say anything to that guy. Um, but anyways, so they fucking, uh, so they ended up toning this whole fucking thing down. Right. They go, look, we're not going to, we're not going to get rid of you guys. Uh, it was the wrong tone, but blah, blah, blah. And then what ended up happening was they fucking, dialed it back like 40%, really took all the balls out of it. Um, and then, you know, a few days later, we shot the pilot in front of a live studio audience, and it actually killed. It went great, but it didn't end up getting picked up. And, uh, and that's my, uh, that's my uh, story about bombing. 
Sorry, guys. I had, I had to go in the well there, man. I ran out of fucking stories to tell, tell you for this week. All I know is that the Bills are playing the Patriots tonight in Gillette Stadium. Anything can happen. Um, they just don't have a quarterback. They got a great defense, though, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I don't think the Patriots losing one game is the worst fucking thing. I think it's actually better, man. It, it makes people focus on somebody else. So, uh, you know, worst case scenario, we're nine and one. I'm on vacation, you know, I'm having a good time here. So, uh, that is it. I'll talk to you guys on Thanksgiving. Um, I'll try to make a, a pie crust video. I'm going to do that shit. Why not? I said I was going to do it right. That'll be me giving back, giving thanks to you guys listening to the podcast. <laughs> um, I'm doing, and listen to uh, the Joe Rogan, uh, podcast, uh, Joe Rogan experience. I'm going to be doing that tomorrow. Um, and, uh, I think that's it. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. If you're traveling, you don't have time to listen to this podcast. I don't get a chance to say it. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you to everybody that's coming out to my show, uh, over the years from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. And, uh, that's it. Go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you on Thursday. What's up everybody? And welcome back to the anything better podcast NFL edition, uh, for what preview week Week number 12? Week number 12. Can it be? Oh, my God, dude. This Where's was, the time going? This was a blink of an eye. Um, when are people going to get used to the time going by fast, Paul? I think it's an age thing. I think it's yeah, an but age when, thing. When are you going to get used to it? I think because Do it's I have to listen to somebody to every fucking year go, can you believe the summer's over? Can you believe it, Paul? I mean, God, it just feels just like yesterday. We were taking the fucking bathing suits out of the fucking attic. You look yeah, good, or the Paul. People that Paul go, you look or the, good. Or the you people that take it too far. The people that go, I know. I know. I know. It's, it's crazy. Like, and the kids are getting so big. What happened? What happened? It's like I turned around and all of a sudden she's divorced in 26, sucking cock behind our Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> or, then the, or then the or then the over uh over emotional ones who go i know and then the kids leave i can't i can't that's the hardest part <laughs> no i'm an old dad so i always get this so i tell you you know they go up fast you better you know make sure you don't fucking i go i know i know i know and they're like no i'm, I'm telling you it's like dude i get it i yeah, get I it you weren't know. there you it's weren't like there I, yeah, stop projecting your awful job as a dad onto me no matter what they got, it's gonna fly by. Everything fucking flies by. Just yeah. shut up about it flying by. Here's what they should say: I wasn't there. <laughs> I wasn't. There. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I wasn't there. Well, it was time to ride a bike. Ride a bike. I missed it. Uh, uh, all right, guys. My kid still can't swim. Okay, that hurts me. <laughs> Uh, you don't tell them the alphabet, their neighbor. <laughs> I wasn't there, Paul. I missed their first steps. I missed their first steps. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I needed a laugh. I needed a laugh. Paulie's having a bad one this week, dude. Usually, usually I'm, 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 dude, I'm having, a, I'm having one. Paulie needs a glass of red wine and to put his feet up on Thanksgiving and be grateful for his life and everything because Paul had a rough one. Um, okay. Hey. All right. Well, you know. Hey, I mean, Bill, nothing a little, nothing a little Cabernet Sauvignon can't handle. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Why deal with what's making you sad when you can medicate? <laughs> uh, hey, is a, a gambling thing. I love Paul. Yeah. I love the fucking. Oh Jesus Christ! I love the expert gambler. You know who he comes on like I've won so much that now I'm gonna pay it forward, and I'll, if you pay me, I'm gonna pick you winners. It's just like, wait a minute. You're so good at gambling that you're going to stop and help me out? Get the fuck out of here. You lost your ass. You realize you can't beat the fucking book. So now you're trying to fucking, you know, have me go make your bets while I pay you 20 bucks to lose, right? Yeah, I saw this one guy. He was, he said he had his hair slicked back black, slicked back, and he had glasses on and a sweater. And he goes... Don't tell me about all the games you lost, and then you just talk about the two you won. I'm here to win, dude. It was, it was, but it's if ridiculous. You saw, if you saw his, if you saw what he was wearing, it was almost like he went to a costume place, and the costume said "professional gambler outfit." Uh, <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to teach you things that the bookie does not want you to know. 
If the quarterback's got a flu, I know. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, guys. This Dude, is- I was just out in Vegas. I'm not going to name the casino, yeah. but they got this new fucking rule out there on blackjack. On blackjack, if the dealer hits 22, it's a push. That's ridiculous. And that's fucking un American. I got another one for you. I went to Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. You can't get them at a grocery store, even though you kind of can now. Um, yeah, I go in mind. there to get a dozen fucking munchkins, and they go, I can't do that. They only come in 10. I'm like, oh. yeah, let me guess. It's the same fucking price, right? I didn't say that, but that's, you know, I said it nicer than that because the lady behind the register, she's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's like my first day. Well, why do you think that is? Because the last person fucking quit. Because they're trying to, that's the skim, Paul. That's the skim. I mean, dude, not, you're 100% right. Not getting a dozen donuts at Dunkin' Donuts is not a No, American. the munchkins. I can only I give you 10. Uh, I can only, oh, yeah, did the price go down by two munchkins? Is this another fucking scam you figured out this quarter to make a little bit more money? Dude, I swear to God, Paul, like the geniuses, they have us all yelling at each other. The biggest fucking welfare recipients in this fucking country are the fucking assholes at the top. They take all the fucking money. They don't pay any taxes. And then they blame broke people that have no money, no power and make no decisions. They have politicians in their pockets. Paul, I'm on a rant here. <laughs> you get, uh, oh, dude! I can't wait! To, I can't wait to talk about coaches. That's one thing that's on the agenda today. I, I want my coach look like he fucking played football, like he lined up and he scared people. Like that new Raiders coach. That's a fucking coach. I don't uh, want the coach to look like somebody I cheated off of in fucking math class. That's just me, Paul. That's just who I am. I don't. I want to be my- afraid of my coach. I don't want my coach to look like a sleaze ball either. I don't want a snake either. I want booze on his breath. Yeah, a little <laughs> overweight, a little gullet, you know. Um, I don't want a head case either. But I like a nice slob. If a guy's going to be a slob, I like a nice slob. Yeah, he <laughs> just know? eats bad food. He eats bad food, but he means well. Yeah. <laughs> he means well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't you want know? a fat coke head. I want a guy who's getting a Grand Slam breakfast. I'll tell you, best happy looking slob, Wade Phillips. <laughs> what Wade, Wade Phillips wasn't Wade Phillips, do nice guy. Wade Phillips coaches a football game. He looks like he's holding his wife's purse, and he doesn't care. Loves he figured his wife. It out. Loves his wife. I could tell just by watching. You could tell he's a romantic. <laughs> I could tell just by watching him fail on that fourth and three. His reaction. Yeah. He loves his wife. And you know what he did after he failed on that fourth down, Paul? He immediately put it in perspective. <laughs> You know, in the bigger picture. (laughs) That's right. That's exactly right. Uh, I love my wife. uh, I got a nice house. Jerry Jones can control me. That's what he wants. That's why the Cowboys will never win. Jerry Jones is their problem. Jerry Jones is the nightmare before Christmas in Dallas. Jerry Jones is Dracula, dude. He's Dracula. He's not he sleeps in a fucking coffin. Let me tell you something. It's the biggest coffin in all the NFL. We got the biggest football. We got the biggest fucking the biggest fucking bathroom at our fucking stadium. We got the biggest hole in the roof, so Jesus can watch it. too. My wife designed it. My wife put that. Remember, he said my wife did the chandelier. She did it. But this ain't me. I got to give her all the credit. <laughs> Remember the credit I wouldn't give Jimmy Johnson. I'm now giving it my wife. I rode here today on a horse. <laughs> get a fucking gm and shut up fucking wax face son of a bitch oh shit this has nothing to do with jerry jones it has to do with I, the fact that i went one and three last week paul because fuckhead whoever the fuck three, he bill. is can't kick a goddamn fucking field goal paul i'm, bill, I'm slipping away i'm going bill, into the deep water bill you went two and two bill <laughs> i mean you're wrong every week you went two and two and i went two and two hey paul if you know if i want to get insulted i would just go talk to my wife all right i don't need to listen you tell me that i'm wrong also we we both went two and two and you go i went one and no three. i did yeah yeah you went two i don't know I, I don't i don't know uh anyway let's get into that fucking seattle goddamn fucking game this is what i hate about gambling paul is i i'm literally fucking mad about an eight an nfc west game my team was off i should have had my feet up you know <laughs> having a having a sarsaparilla paul what am I doing? What's a what am I doing? Huh? I'm fucking losing my shit about the fucking Seahawks and the Rams. I don't give a fuck about either one of those teams. Dude, when I lose a heartbreaker, I just do, I, you know, I pull a Wade Phillips. I go, you know, get the next one. <laughs> That's not true, Paul. You text in caps. No, only Giants. Only when my team does. When these guys go down, I hurt. I get hurt. 
I don't that know. Hurts me. Okay. I don't know. I've gotten a lot of fucking. No, you've gotten got, a lot what of. Are they, what are they doing? You yes. Know, what are they doing? Oh, um, you know who I ran into the other day? I ran. I went to. Uh, uh, oh, I'm going to do a little promo here. Uh, Leo on Netflix starring Adam Sandler. Old Freckles does a little voice in that. And uh, when I was oh, at the yeah. premiere, fucking great movie, dude. Really funny. Bunch of jokes from for adults. And the, my kids loved it, too. Um, I ran into uh, Nick Turturro. Oh, and I was like, oh, my God, dude. I go, you during baseball season, when the Yankees are messing up, it's my favorite. It's like, that guy's like such a real fan. I just love when... I don't even know the Yankees are playing, and all of a sudden he'll just send out a text, all caps, that just says, what are they doing? <laughs> and I'm like, all right. Evidently the Yankees are playing tonight, and they were up. And now now they're, they're not up. Like, that guy gives a fuck about game 47 of the regular, of, of the yeah, whatever the fuck you call base. What's baseball's regular season called? The season? The se Yeah. 162 games, dude. And Yankee, I will say this. I will say this. I hate to say this. I mean, it's going to be a tough thing for me to say on this show. <sighs> look. <laughs> oh, look. Look, dude. I got to. Here's the thing with me. <sighs> here's the thing with me, dude. I got to call it how I see it. I got to call the truth. Red Sox fans I, on a baseball level are. I mean, that's like a like Red Sox with baseball is something. Your fans are are fucking know everything. Fucking, I mean, on a real. But I will say, Yankee fans too. Not maybe as much as you guys. Yankee fans and Red Sox fans. This is where you buy back the compliment. No, no, no. I'm but, just but we're right there. No, because I was gonna say us. Because I was gonna say Yankee fan, a real Yankee fan will call up the fan. I heard it, dude. We were on game eleven last year. And he called up and he goes, dude, I just see it, man. We don't have it. Now, granted, he was right, but he's talking right. about our infield and it's week 11. And he had a fucking whole scream at them going, it's, 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 I mean, it's game 11. Uh, you guys are like that too with the Red Sox, dude. I, I give it to July. Um, but dude, did you see the video? So what just the happened there? You started to compliment us and then you just talked about some Yankee guy calling it by game 11. And then you just walked away from it. It was like, you, I saw the gift. I was reaching for the gift bag. And then you just fucking sort of moonwalked I was out. Basically the saying, I was basically saying you guys are probably the best baseball town. And I just didn't have it fully in my heart to let it go. Nah, <laughs> I think that that's what happened. Being honest, And then I just went, Yankee fans care too. <laughs> um, dude, did you oh, see? Oh, is that the NFL pretending that they support the troops, but they actually get paid like it's a commercial? Hey, hey, man. My wife. Da, 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 da. Oh, Come on, you know my birthday's Veterans Day, and my wife always gets me the Veterans Don't Day. Don't act like you served. Look at this, I did. You know, you know my birthday's Veterans Day, so what do I got to thank you for your service? No, but you got to like be, being born on Veterans Day. You weren't no, even in the you weren't even the fucking Cub no, Scouts. I, I like the Veterans Day apparel, you know. I like to get everything Veterans Day because it was my birthday. That's all. Okay. It's a gift. It was a gift. Okay, but you started in on with me with like I wasn't supporting the troops. No, no, I thought which you were is which is what has led to bankrupting this fucking country. <laughs> you can't criticize the coaches, or that means you don't support doesn't support the fucking troops. Yeah, I mean, if you don't, it's the dumbest thing ever. So then you can't question where they put them, and then you watch the coffers of the whole fucking country go like this, and then they blame Ty's Paul. I'm on a rant again, dude. Did I'm, you, you know what it is, Paul? I'm just gearing up for another election where my two choices are going to be two senile fucking ninety year olds. Like, this is the best. Can I get a 40-year-old? I, I know. He's actually going to have to live with his decisions. Dude, I said that on stage. I go, can we get a 36-year-old that looks like James Bond just once? I go, if you get that guy, I don't give a fuck about his policies. I want a full head of hair, slick back nice. Yeah. Like 007. You know? Yeah, and then fucking go out there to Monte, Monte Carlo. Pulls fucking, up and, you know, yeah. go throw some dice. I don't give a shit. You make me, you, know, you look good. You make me feel good. I don't want Bill, two fucking old guys. Billy pulls up in a Lambo. The fucking thing comes up. He comes out with a cocktail. He starts pointing like. <laughs> no, no. The door comes up and a Secret Service guy gets out first. It was sitting in his lap and then he gets out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Did you see? I didn't know this, but apparently the Diamondbacks who just lost the World Series. 
Dude, this was fucking brutal. Talk about a relationship. steamrolled by the fucking Rangers. Yep, but talk about a relationship being over with friends, I would imagine. Dude, apparently the Diamondbacks bring in a pitcher that was like struggling through the playoffs. And he came out of the fucking thing and he starts jogging in. And they showed the, the and I guess this is the last game or something when it was really close. And they showed the catcher and the catcher's watching him jog in and the catcher just goes, Dude, like it was basically like you're bringing that fucking guy in to lose. You never know. His uh, girlfriend probably said something before the game. Of course, going she did. like, so the good. A- the good thing is, if you lose tonight, then we can go on that stay vacation. And he's probably thinking like, Man, I, this is what I dreamed about as a kid. And then people like, Paul, never underestimate my ability to blame women. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, guys, this is uh, week 12 of the... You see when George W. Bush got a standing ovation at the Rangers game? There's a guy who bankrupted the country. Woo! <laughs> Talk about a guy that got a pass, dude. That guy came out on Kimmel and everybody was clapping like he was... I remember when people fucking hate... I mean, that's unbelievable. Dude, his playing the saxophone, like, like fucking stupid Bill Clinton, his thing, he played the saxophone on Arsenio and then he just gets a he's cool pass... He's the, he was the guy who did the final nail in the coffin to deregulate the banks that set up 2008. George W. Bush fucking threw a heater right after 9-11. He can do no wrong. That's it. Yeah. I mean, you got to give it up as a pressure pitch, dude. Yankee Stadium. I mean, a tough pitch with a fucking vest on. They said he had a vest on, dude. That thing was... That thing was <laughs> they said he talked about it for like 15 years after. He still talks about it. I heard it. Like, yeah, you know, you But what that? else is he going to talk about? Yeah. Yeah, his painting. Um, his policies where he goes, oops, yeah, I guess I was wrong on that one. <laughs> I mean, talk about fucking brutal. Coalition uh, of the Willing, Paul. All right, guys. <laughs> it's the uh, Week Sorry. 12 preview. And uh, I believe, Andrew, you can check, but I believe we both went 2-2 two and two last week. It's the BetMGM app, everybody. All you got to do is download the BetMGM app, put $10 in, and then all you have to do is uh, – you do a $10 bet, you get up to $200, regardless of the outcome of your bet. There you go. You have a lot of fun with us. We came close to another special, Bill. We came close to another special. Dude, you know what kills me? Is Mahomes threw to Kelsey in the beginning of the like the second touchdown. So by the second quarter, two out of three things happen. Fucking Jalen Hurts throws a bomb to this guy. 41-yard completion, tackled on the one-yard line, and then he runs it in. Did they review it? Did they, Was he close to the touchdown or no? They didn't review it. The guy called it on the field, and he, he got it right. You know what I fucking hate about that, Paul? Can they ever have the angle right? Like, oh, that's the first down, and I'm fucking looking at it like this. It's like, what does it take? They literally have a fucking camera on the fucking marker, and it still looks a little fucking off. That's their, that's their vig. That's their juice. That's their juice, yeah. Um, all right, well, this week is week number 12, and I believe I have the first pick this week. Paul, I believe you do, too. And, oh, this is Thanksgiving football week. Oh. Paul, can you believe it's Thanksgiving already? The kids get so big. Can you believe for the price of 12 munchkins you get 10? Fucking Joe Burrow out for the Paul, year. would you like to upgrade and get a straw? <laughs> <laughs> These are going to be the new scams. By the way, we don't wash our glasses. Would you I'm- like to upgrade and get a straw? You know what's oh, Paul. Funny? Paul's looking. Paul's no, looking no, no, early. No. My wife is like texting me. It's like, you know what? It's Thanksgiving, dude. All right. Hey, Paul, in their world, it's always Thanksgiving. It's never worth it. It's never worth it. All right. Here we go. My first pick. Ah. I wanted to go see a movie today, Paul. That's what I wanted to do. We're not doing that. Oh, I wanted to see a movie, too. I want to see Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. It's Thanksgiving. Why wouldn't I go see it? I love Quentin Tarantino. Tim Dillon. Thanksgiving. No, I don't think it's Tarantino. It's uh, What did you e- just say? It's uh, Eli Roth, I believe. I know. Oh. But it's his fake movie trailer that he put out. He did Machete. Yeah, Tim Dillon's in it. That's right. Yeah, Tim, yeah Eli Roth. Dude, the way what? you just said Tim Dillon is in it after you just read that fucking text, it really annoyed me. No, I'm, what? You just glanced over and you had the fucking answer. What do you mean? Look at what says private chat. It says Eli Roth and it says Tim Dillon is in it. It's Jake the Snake helping us out. Oh, no, but I saw Eli Roth in the interview and I saw Tim's head. I don't want to give it away, but anyway, check it out, I guess. I, Can you I believe think- Eli Roth already has another movie coming out? I mean, where is the time going? Remember how young he was when he started? I also want to see uh, Joaquin Phoenix 
as Napoleon. Yeah, I'm getting tired of that fucking dude, man. What? What? I don't know. Just when he fucking started crying about the calf, I was just like, dude. Crying about what calf? He Muscle like start- or an animal? No, the animal. He was basically like talking about like um, when they take the calf from the mother and then they get a steak out of it. It was like this vegan thing, but he got emotional. And I was just like, oh, dude, I loved your performance and I didn't want to go there. Um, He was like, when you take the calf from the mother, you could hear them crying out for their mother. And he was like, I thought it was it almost like sounded like he was talking about children and he was talking about cows and shit. And I was like, all right. man. Well, I mean, well, I, is he wrong? I'm not saying I'm not going to have a steak, but I'm just saying you don't want to, Paul, you know what it is the same way. You don't want to know where your gas comes from. You don't want to know where your steak comes from. Paul, you don't want to know where that hoodie came from. Do you know how many crying children sewed that together for 30 cents a month? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Bill, I don't know what to do for my first pick. Paul, I, think, I know what to do. I just fucking I- let it rip. Look at a game that fucking makes you fucking, I don't Jake, know what. I was going to say the hair on top of your head stand up. That makes your fucking, your, your beard get a little fuzzier. How about this? Jake the Snake, I'm off the Chargers. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. It's over. Oh, my God. It's over. They they finally That's did like it. When Ace Rothstein finally walked away from Sharon Stone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take your fucking money. Is it what you want? All right. How about this? I was going to go. I was going to do something here because of Thanksgiving. But I'm going to flip. I'm going to change it. I'm going to take the Denver Broncos. I'm going to take the Denver Broncos at home. Ooh, uh, minus two and a half. That sucks. I thought it was one and a half. Minus, I'm going to still take it at, at two and a half. I'm, you know what? They've won a few games in a row now, and Russell Wilson now has 19 touchdowns, tied for third in the NFL. I like that kid Sutton. I'm going to take the, the, the Denver Broncos at home. Against the Browns, who have a backup quarterback. I know they have a good defense, but I'm just going to see if Denver can r- ride this out and squeeze in there. I like it. I All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Philadelphia Eagles. Minus three against the Buffalo Bills. Oh. I like the Eagles with who's their coach? Crazy Eddie. I'm Crazy Eddie. Dude, that's the best one. That's – I'll be honest with you, dude. That is a, probably one of the – I just – he, he is completely – it's emotionally funny. unstable and you know what i fucking i feel seen <laughs> as the kids say i fucking love that guy do you i love that guy he annoys me you don't know what he's gonna do he cries during the anthem he nods at the camera he's yelling at fucking he's yelling at uh cheese fans i wish he yelled at Mahomes' wife that would have been perfect the two of them yeah fuck yeah that would have been awesome Oh, if he did that, then I would have been a fan forever. That would have been WWE. If the two of them got going, I love both of them, man. Fucking. Yeah, me too. I love lunatics. And I just believe in um, Jalen Hurts' ability to extend the play, Paul. You think you got him. He runs. He gets the fucking first down. Or he runs around enough where people get open. I just feel like the Bills, they won last week. They had a big day. And they they just keep going. And now here we go. Now here we go, and now we're gonna be what everybody thought we were, and 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 they just keep every they just keep tripping over their own feet. The Eagles minus three, Paul. At home too. That's a good pick. All right. <clears throat> oh, man. All right, dude. Come on, Paul. Pull the trigger. Do it, Paulie. Don't think about it. Just relax <laughs> and squeeze. You don't have the balls. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right Uh, oh this again oh hey hey. guess who said he's gonna kill himself (laughs) uh do i dare have the balls to do this no i don't i'm gonna do you know what i'm gonna it's too many points i I don't that's all right oh you're gonna do the, the cowboys no, no. I was looking at the I was looking at the um the Texans and uh dude, I don't know who the Texans are a really good team that are gonna make the playoffs, and that's too fucking close of a line. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not going into this week. I'm going into this week a little wishy washy here, dude. I'm not gonna I lie don't like to you. this, Paul. I know, I know. This isn't like you. I know this is November. This is Verzi time. You know what? I gotta go Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving. I know it's seven and a half. I, know I hate the half. I hate the half. I lost. It's a loss. But here's the thing. 
no, here's the thing. It's not that I mean the half kills me, but listen, I think the Lions want to really show out on Thanksgiving because this is Yeah, and little- I would rather root for the fucking Lions on Thanksgiving. That's their day. It's not the Packers. No. It's not their day. And I think that an Why eight, are they even there? I think that an eight and two Lions team, you know, this used to be their Super Bowl. I think they're gonna go, let's show everybody who we really are. Everybody's gonna be watching. It's probably one of the most watched games in the of the year. I'm gonna take them. I do hate the half. Yeah, if your wife doesn't put on the Westminster dog show. No, nah, she she knows better. Uh, we watch the dog show and then I I I watch the game later. Although I'm not gonna lie to you, Paul. I like the dog show. And for two years in a row, me and my lovely wife, we picked the winner. You know how many fucking dogs that is, Paul? That's nice. That's like hitting a three-team tease in a sport you don't even watch. <laughs> the fuck do I know about dogs? Um. All right, Lions 7 I know they're happy when you come home. They're happy to see you. Yeah. You know? They yeah. make you feel like you matter. <laughs> Unlike some of the people you live with. <laughs> Dude, I'm in such a stupid mood. Anybody watching this, I don't mean half the shit I'm saying. I'm just being a fucking, I'm just goofing. New boot goofing. All right, what do you got, Paul? <clears throat> I took Lions in at seven and a half. Oh, you did? I'm fucking running my yap like a douche here. Eight and a half. Eight um, and a half. I'm going to take them. Seven and a half. Hey, Paul, you know, I actually, <clears throat> yeah, you know what the Texans do, Paul? They cover. What is it? One and a half? Oh! Yeah. I'm going to take the Texans. I believe in them. I don't believe in the Jaguars. Don't you shake your fucking head at me, Paul? Do I shake your head no, when you make no, picks? I'm shaking in a good way. Relax. I'm going. All right. Like, I'm, I'm all right. shaking. Got me all going. defensive. No, I'm shaking like he's got. See balls. that? So then you don't know what the catcher of, of the Diamondbacks was doing. You don't know what he was saying. No, when you I see just it, misread you, know. you. No, when you see it, you know. Uh. <laughs> you know what, Paul? There's too many fucking cameras. You can't even have a fucking moment. <laughs> you can't even have a fucking moment. Somebody picks it up. It's. How did the Astros dude. not think they were going to get caught? That's what amazes me. Dude, that's a bit. That's a bit. These guys in pro sports, they can do nothing. Remember, what's his name? Tried to bite a sandwich. <laughs> he, was going, he was hungry. So he had like a bit. He just went like this. And it was just like the biggest meme. <laughs> he just was hungry. <laughs> yeah, no. If he just went out and ate it, he would have been fine. If he just fucking ate it, it yeah. would have been funny. If you try and hide it. That's right. It's like being gay, Paul. If you're in the closet, people that like gay people, like, he's totally gay. And they come at you like fucking animals. The second you come out, Paul, it's like it's like you're a hero. It's like you were the one who dropped the bombs. Yeah. You haven't noticed that? Paul, when it's, are you going to come out? You're trying too hard with that fucking shit brown uh, vest you got on there. Come on, man. A what gift. color is that? It's uh, brown. I would debate that. It's brown. Look. Look. What color does it look? You know what it is, Paul? It's depressing. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Probably for a show, it probably is. Brown doesn't look good on camera. I mean, it's designed to hide in the fucking Mojave. Yeah. That's right. On a lush land, Paul. Yeah, I should have went with a more color that pops. Go ahead. It's my turn again? I just picked the Texan. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Look at me. Now I'm yapping. All right. Hey, Paul, look at us, you know? All right. So you got the Texans. I do have the Texans. I have the Eagles and I have the Texans. And I feel pretty good about that. I got some East Coast people. I got some people down in Texas, you know? I can't take that game. All right. Top city in Texas. Who do you like? I'm a big fan of Texas. I like Dallas. Dallas is my favorite. I'm a Dallas guy. Dallas is my favorite. Yeah. Even though I, I'm not big, I'm big show off, I like watching people showing off. I like Dallas. Look at my wife's big titties. You can I, I stick mean, your face in them if you want to. Andrew, I'm Shirt sorry. Shirt on. Shirt on, though. <laughs> Shirt on. <clears throat> I, I'm sorry, Andrew. You're going to probably have to edit, dude. I'm all over the place this week, dude. I don't know, man. I got me, Paul. You know when I went out? I got my own ranch right outside of Dallas. I got me a dually. Ain't even for me either. It's my for my grandson, my grand nephew. <laughs> I let him just drive around. Well, he ain't gonna hit nothing. If he runs over something, we'll just fucking eat it. Should I take the? I'm gonna take. The, I'm gonna take the Raiders getting nine. I'm gonna take the Raiders getting nine. 
against the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs win the game, but you know what? The Raiders are coming off their first loss under Antonio Pierce and they're home, and I think the crowd's going to be into it, and I think it could be a backdoor cover. It's a divisional rivalry, too. Those games are historically close. Who do the Raiders have at quarterback? That's the problem. That's why I stayed oh, away. O'Connell. Is, is Mad Max back? I don't know. I don't know, but they have O'Connell at quarterback. I don't know, dude. O'Connell. Listen, not going to lie. This is uh, this is uh, Paulie's wishy-washy week. I don't know. All right, this is where I get wishy-washy. Aiden, Aiden O'Connell. No disrespect. <clears throat> this is where I get wishy-washy, Paul. I'm thinking Packers. I don't want to do that to myself. Beautiful wife, two beautiful kids. I don't need to be fucking screaming about a game on Thanksgiving. You know? Fuck that. Fuck that game. Then the Ravens. Minus three and a half against the Chargers. I kind of like that. I kind of like the Browns, Paul. Plus two and a half. I'm going to go, you know what? The game's going to be on out here. By the way, totally overrated the fucking NFL package. Because the best game is usually on regular TV anyway, and you get the best announcers. Dude, I'm gonna I, don't take, I, yeah, I don't watch football games. I watch the Giants and whatever game is on TV. The National Worst football game. market ever, Paul? New York City. When I fucking lived there, all I got was the boring ass Giants and the shitty fucking Jets. Everything. That was the one o'clock and then the four o'clock, and they fucking sucked. It all fucking right. sucked. But I'm a Giants fan, so I, that's fine for me. I'm just saying, Paul. Yeah. It's a terrible fucking market. <laughs> okay. It's unfucking. You're in New York City. I figure I should have some excitement, right? Yeah, I know what you mean. Because yeah, the excitement yeah, yeah. was when I was in New York was the fucking Yankees and whoever the fuck they signed and watching them steamroll the league. That was sort of something to watch. All right, I'm going to take the Ravens. Minus three and a half against them. San Diego Chargers, Paul. Dude. You got to move out to Southern California, Paul. They got strawberries the size of your head. The Ravens are your Sharon Stone, dude. You just can't. No, they're not. I stayed away from these fuckers for weeks. <laughs> Um, they turned right. the ball over. I learned that watching inside the NFL. By the way, did you see the, the host of that? Did you see that fucking medallion he hang, had hanging off his chest? It was just, I, I, I'm off his chain, I mean. No. Like, I, I, I wish I could get away with that. Oh, no, I didn't see I, that. It was something else, Paul. Um, we're at whatever planet we're settling next. I feel like he had the answer. And and, and like that, that thing hanging off his chain, like – Somebody else has it. You stick it together, and then you just teleport out of here. That's how nice it was. I'm going to take the Miami Dolphins to beat the Jets by 10. Oh, man, this is a week that's going to be. Oof, <laughs> you know what I loved about that? I love how you tried to have false confidence on that pick. 1,000%. <laughs> Nothing was faker. Nothing was faker than that confidence with that pick. Um, I'm going to just, you know what, man? The Jets have their third string quarterback. I think it's starting. nine and a half. Somebody just wrote in nine and a half, nine and a half. Hey, hey Paul. Hey, hey, that could be the difference between uh, enjoying the stuffing and uh, throwing it against the wall. <laughs> Dude, it's at the Jets too, but they have just, they're just bad, man. They're anemic. They can't move the fucking ball. So you get scared ball. in the first half because they have a good defense, but then they can't move the ball. And then their defense gets tired. And then those dolphins start running downhill, even though they don't have feet. Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill and the, they're healthy and they, you know, I just think with the Jets with a third string quarterback, man, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take Miami to, to, to win that game by a lot. I think the Jets season is over and I think it'll allow Aaron Rodgers to rest and not have to fucking rush back with an Achilles. So there you go. I'm going to take that. Fucking like okay. This. Paul Fersey, <laughs> Dolphins, minus Oof. nine and a half in the aluminum siding stadium that is. Met life. People trash in that stadium, Paul. Yeah. I like it. You know what I like about that stadium? Looks like a football stadium. Uh, what don't they like? There's not a place to fucking wash your nuts every fucking 10 feet. Um, I got the Lions. Oh, my God, dude. I'm getting all these points. I mean, this is fucking rough, dude. You're laying points. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just... I'm What's daring. What's going on with you? I'm daring the NFL guys to give me a losing week. <laughs> What did you go last week? Two and two. Oh, two and two. We That's both like a did. losing week for you. We both went two and two. Oh, Billy wins some, lose some. I never win some, lose some. Every fucking week. I'm four I never games under. Dude, I've gone two and two every week, and I've had two one and three weeks. 
That's insane, I'm actually. Possibly three. That's actually insane to do 12 weeks of that and be that fucking even. And barely know anybody's name in the NFL because you because you're fucking doing the right thing, Paul. By the playing way, playing with your kids. By the way, by so fast, Paul. This is <laughs> this is the most injury season ever for major players, dude. Like like uh Aaron Rodgers and now Joe Burrow and they uh Andrew Thomas, uh the wide receiver, Mike Williams. Like all these guys are just out for the year, man. It's like Yeah, I, I got a theory on that. I don't remember guys getting hurt. I got a theory we were, on that. What's a theory? I just want to be that guy in the sports oh, yeah, bar. Oh, you know, that guy. Where you're yeah. just sitting there going like, oh, Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. Everything. You want to know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. Yeah, they put too many pellets in the AstroTurf. Look at look at it. Look my, at buddy, my buddy has the contract. He was telling me. He said, he said <laughs> we're done, and the owner said, no, put more down. <laughs> they cause cancer. There's lead in those tires. <laughs> That's what it is. They keep saying that they're blowing out their knees. They're actually they're, – it's lead poisoning – and they're covering it up. Yeah, yeah. Or, or the guy that goes like this. This is the funny guy. I love this guy. The guy that goes, <clears throat> no, they knew he was going to be hurt. They knew. They kn it's like, what? <laughs> they let him out there. I think he was already hurt. <laughs> he was. You know, those guys. He, no, dude, he was hurt in training camp. You could see it. I I like, anytime, anytime there's a quick trade, you know what it was? He was banging the owner's daughter. That's what it was. He was. He was hooking up with her. They told him to stop, and he kept fucking her. So they shipped him off to Buffalo. Dude, I was at an Applebee's, and I overheard the booth behind me. Apparently, it was the guy's lawyer telling you, dude, there was internal problems in the locker room. I heard him. The wide receivers coach lives on my block. <laughs> I overheard him. He was having a cup of coffee. <laughs> he said the quarterback knocked up one of the cheerleaders. Dead ass. The thing I hate most when people say that. <laughs> dead ass. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> dead ass. <laughs> How funny is that hearing that coming out of my mouth? Fucking Dude, dead old. ass? Dude, dead, dead ass. Yeah. Hey, Dude. Paul, you don't want this smoke. Oh, that's the worst. Or like. You know what kills me? How about every time anybody makes anything musical, they have to have the Jay-Z meme when he's got the glasses nodding his head. Like, when do people think that's going to be funny? Which Jay-Z meme? There's this meme where he's, he's fucking, he's got his glasses on, he's fucking nodding his head, just going like this. And it's always off of some shitty music. Oh. Every fucking time. You remember when YouTube first came out? And everybody's like, what was this film with a potato? How many fucking times? Okay, the first time it's funny. Fucking 10 years later. Well, it was just filled with a potato, laughing my ass off, not asking for that smoke, dead ass. <laughs> uh, Andrew, I don't know my picks. There it is. Oh. There it is, Paul. That. Every fucking time. Every single fucking time. There's a song out. Look at it. That's great. That's great. Hey, did you go to the Jay Z exhibit out in uh, Brooklyn? No, I don't go to Brooklyn. Shit, okay. No, I'm not a Brooklyn fan. I don't like the Brooklyn Nets. I don't like that all these fucking people that never even knew what real Brooklyn was is acting like, I mean, where Brooklyn at? Go Brooklyn. Oh, dude. You don't like it safe for all those beta male stand-up comedians that live out there? <laughs> somebody goes, dude, somebody goes, you should do a show in Brooklyn. And I saw the lineups and I'm like, yeah, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. I know, because you're going to go out there and you're going to try to have a good show. And and what's funny is is those liberal cunts are going to so judge you the second you walk on stage. I had that happen in Brooklyn. And once. then it's, yeah, like, yeah, the open-minded liberals. I Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Back in the day had that room at the Knitting Factory, Hannibal Burris, and I went and did it. And I remember, I'm like, yeah, so I got married. I got a couple kids. Anybody? And I remember, the, I remember like... One woman was standing there in a scarf looking at me. And when I said, you have a family, anybody got a family that she was like, almost like you're on your fucking own. And I wanted to go, I wanted to go, oh, oh, so your parents are paying for that brownstone in Williamsburg. And I'm the fucking asshole. I'm the asshole. You were mainstream Polly. I still am. <laughs> hey, Bill, what, what's, what's wrong with living on Main Street? Uh, what's wrong? Like, what, what's, what's wrong with it? Um, Andrew, what are my picks, dude? Oh, what, what did I take? Oh, I took the Lions. I took the Raiders. Who else did I take? Paul, I don't know if this is the coffee talking, but I am having a great time. 
I got the Dolphins. Are you? I am. I'm being a fucking idiot this week. I thought you were nine and a half. Maybe it's because my tour's over, Paul, and I am. I I don't have any fucking road dates until uh, until the Super Bowl. Super oh. Bowl. Okay. No, I, I got the Raiders, not the Chiefs. I got the Dolphins. Jesus I got the Lions. Christ. And and what else? Do I have another pick or no? Just drop my cell phone. Oh, and I got the Broncos. Got it. Got it. Thank you, oh, Jake. Oh, good. It's still working. Thank you, Jake the Snake. I mean, see, Jake the Snake is just Bill awesome. has one more pick. What do you mean I have one more pick? I picked the fucking Eagles. I picked the Texans. I picked the Ravens. All right, you're right. All right, let me get the Browns. In honor oh. of Paul's, in the honor of Paul Verzi's Brown fucking hide in the desert. We're going to go head to head here. Why? Who do you got? I got the Who's... Broncos. Oh, yeah. The Broncos aren't going to win again. Minus two and a half. Although, Russell. I'm looking he... at a rough week here, guys. Well, what's a rough week for you, Paul? Two and two? No. One and one three? And three, oh and four. No, you haven't gone on four the whole year. Yeah, I did week two. You did? Yeah. You did? I was down, dude. Did you? I was down, but never out. Never fucking out. Paul, you fucking dug a hole. And they were calling for your job. And then you went on a fucking tear. And then all of those people, all of those people that sent you tweets. What kind of a jerk off would call Twitter X? <laughs> I hate that. It, you know what I mean? It's just, I had a it's like, it's, it's the Staples Center. It's not the Bitcoin fucking Fugazi crypto fucking whatever the fuck they're calling it. It's the Staples Center. It's Lambeau Field. It should be called, none of it should be businesses. It should be called the Coliseum. It should be called the Garden. It should be called the Memorial. The, 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 should be named after a beer. <laughs> That's as far as you go. Like the Patriots used to play in Schaefer Stadium. What's that worst one? Smoothie? Smoothie King Arena? No, the worst one ever was was the jobbing.com <laughs> or something like that. Jobs.com arena where the Phoenix Coyotes played. When me and Joe Bartnick sat at SoFi where we sat and I looked around that place, dude, that place, you called me after you went there the first time. I saw those pillars and it made me think of the Roman Empire or whatever when you said that. And I was just like, I'm in. Dude, <laughs> what, what? I, it looks like a fucking stingray. It's unbelievable. As you're man. coming up to it and you get inside it. When I walked inside and I just looked all around, I felt like I was on mushrooms. It was nuts. It's like, it's is that a green screen or those really fans? That, but I will say you're still way far away. I was waiting. And for they just pump. Every stadium is pumping crowd noise in. Like the level of loud that they are. I bring fucking earplugs to a football game like I'm at a, uh, a concert. Granted, I'm old as shit. Dude, when I looked up. We were sitting there. I looked up and I saw the levels. I was waiting for Russell Crowe's character and uh, the gladiator. Are you not entertained? Just throw a sword at the uh, or the uh, what's Ugh. it called? Is there anything more worse than when a football player yells that to the crowd? Or, or the UFC fighters do too? Yeah, are you? Well, yeah, I, I'll go with UFC because they're actually gladiators. You know what Black, I mean? They're if actually you're pouring blood. Yeah, if you're pouring yeah. blood down. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it is a little hacky, but I can go with that. But when an NFL player, you know, fucking catches a fucking touch, uh, catches a pass and scores a touchdown and then yells, are you not entertained? <laughs> Who did that first? Was it Jay-Z on one of his albums? Why would you ever align yourself like, yeah, I'm at the same level as, as what? A guy who holds family? Yeah. You've defeated a fucking lion? Yeah. With what, a letter opener? I mean, that, yeah, like you're on that level. <laughs> <laughs> Are you not entertained? Uh, <laughs> you're up there rhyming words. Oh, my oh Paul, everybody's getting it this week. <clears throat> what are you doing I for that? I said that big Jay-Z fan, and I went to his uh, that, that thing they had out there in Brooklyn. And you know what was the best part? It was a self-made man. I love the self-made man because it makes you feel like you can do it too. I'm hacking up a lung this week, Paul. I swear to God, every time I fucking come off the road, I'm a little bit sick. And then my kids, I don't know what's going around. No, there's a, all the kids are getting that. What's it called? That, that, uh, my son comes in my room every morning. I, get dad. Can I have waffles? <clears throat> he coughs right in my face. And then it's it. I'm done. Um, what do you guys, are you guys hosting? You host this year? No, Paul, I headline. <laughs> you're not. You're, I headline. I carved the turkey. <laughs> 
I carved the turkey too. Yeah. I'm good at carving it. I figured it out. It took me three years. I finally got it. I finally just got go it. on YouTube. It shows you how to do it. Oh, yeah. I just kind of. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's a murder scene. No, the first year was. I got it. I figured it out. <laughs> it's a murder scene. <laughs> I just picture you slice it in half the other way. Some people, dude, want this one shit. Can you just go in the other room? Can you just go in the other room? I know it's messy. I'm going to clean it up. No, one guy flattened it, dude. It was like the way he broke it. No, the chef, he like broke it down and flattened it and did it. And dude, it was like the neatest thing ever. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm excited though, man. I'm, I got uh, got some family members coming, got some family members not coming. Um, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, um, a nice, it'll be a nice thing. We got, we, we're hosting. Yeah. I got, you know, I got the usual, I got the family, I got the relatives, I got a couple of comics, you know, it's going to be good. But these are comics you love, obviously. Yes. Yeah. I don't like that. I, that's the one thing about Thanksgiving. We we're talking about it before. It's like, I don't like those people that bring stranger. He got, he had nowhere to go. It's like, I, well, I don't know. I, it's my fucking oh, dude. Place. That's the fucking worst. He had nowhere that's to go. Flag. He's got nowhere to go because he's an asshole. And it's like this. It's like, he's a wild card. I don't know him. I don't know what he's going to say. Nobody knows him. And then I look like I'm doing the good deed. And then all of a sudden my family members aren't eggshells because it's something. You got to go animal. in your bedroom and hide your watch. No, no, it's, it's not happening. You're not coming to my house. You're not going to be around my kids. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen, dude. Not with me. He's got nowhere to go. Well, guess what? He still has nowhere to go. <laughs> guess what? My yeah, he's got a place to go. Let's fuck on out of here. <laughs> yeah. I, and I don't like those people. They act like they're, hey, I was wondering, can I friend? He's got nowhere. Ah, sorry. Not enough. Hey, Paul, when you finish carving the turkey, can you yell at you not entertained to your wife and kids? Oh, my God. I'll just hold the carver up. Yeah. Are you not entertained? Look at no, it. in the middle of everybody eating. Just slam your hand down. <laughs> and then just stare at them. As they're like, what the fuck? Just be like, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I just wanted to, you know, just say what I'm thankful for this year. And then you just go hallmark after that. Yeah. I don't, you know, you know what else I don't like? I don't like the I don't like the person that says grace too long for them. It's for them. You know? I don't mind grace unless it starts with Heavenly Father. That's when you know it's going to be long. No, but they're and extra that religious. It, they Heavenly selfish. Father. No, the ones that do we it thank selfishly. You for these gifts. You're supposed to fucking say it quick. You're supposed to say it and mean it. But the ones that like prolong, and we know that we know that. Oh, and, and all the people, people that aren't here with us, then people start getting yeah. sad. It's like Jesus yes. fucking. It's not a. It's not a eulogy. Right. And then and then if somebody at the table is going through a problem, we know Jeff is going through. We pray that Jeff gets through this and Jeff's just holding a knife and fork. <laughs> He's waiting. We know Jeff uh, thought that massage parlor was legal. <laughs> hey, Ma, let's stay on topic here. Come on. <laughs> Come on. His, mo his mother's here. Come on. <laughs> I had a shoulder issue. Great. His wife's a little erratic. You should have listened to me. Oh, God. But Heavenly Father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was in a bad mood. You put me in a silly mood. I'm in a. Oh, my yeah. God. Me and Paul have been joking about, you know, the friend you have that threatens that they're going to kill themselves, but you know they're not. And it oh. just gets exhausting talking them off the fucking ledge. Yeah. That's so funny. And then we were just saying, like, because neither one of us is going to do the bit. And then, like, you just called their bluff. Oh, yeah, you don't got the balls. Yeah, no, yeah. Dude, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Call me when, after you did it. Yeah, no, but they always start off where they want you to say, oh, no, don't say that. They'll go like this. They'll go, ah, dude, I don't give a fuck anymore. Who knows if I'm even going to fuck? They start, who knows if I'm going to be around? And then you're looking at it, and they want you to go, hey, man, come on, dude. Do you need me to and it's no, what you do the first 1400 fucking times. And then you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. Am I Charlie Brown trying to kick the fucking ball here? No, but you had the, well, best hey man, you know, there's a lot of traffic out there. If you want to be one less fucking car. No, you had the best one where you just go, you don't have the balls, dude. That one, that text is because it would just confuse them. <laughs> they would be confused. They would be like, what, dude, I don't have the balls. You don't got it in you. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're right. still and before doing this? fucking people come at us, I've had friends that have killed themselves, but you know what I mean? I've also had friends that threaten to kill themselves and you fucking got to go through all those fucking emotions. And all it is is they, they're just having a fucking uh, narcissist moment where they need attention or whatever it is. I'm not Dr. Phil. If anybody took that seriously watching this, then kill yourself. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm saying like it, it It makes – we're actually saying that we're good friends that feel concerned. Dude, I, I'm not lying. I had a friend say that going, hey, man, I don't know if I'm going to – and I literally was like, dude, don't say that like I'm here for you. And it puts you in the situation. But then when they do it, like you said, multiple times, I'm going, who am I talking to here, dude? This isn't healthy for any fucking body. Go get help and stop doing it to me because I fucking love you. And I don't want – God forbid that, that happens. Um, boy, that football. I, yeah, I mean, after a while, like, is there a rule? Like, how many times can someone threaten to kill themselves? Before, like, you, there should be like a punch card. You know, we get like a free video back oh, if, in the day, or like a, Bill, a free start. St Bill, what if they start saying it? You go, no, you're not. <laughs> oh, this again. <laughs> you said that three months ago. You're still here. I'll tell you right now, if you try to kill yourself one more time, you don't do it. I'm going to fucking kill myself. <laughs> I'll kill you and me. It'll be a murder-suicide, you fucking cucks. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to help you? Because I'm sick of you. <laughs> you just No, you just look around to all your friends as he's saying it. You go, nah. <laughs> he's okay. I'll talk. I'll talk. <laughs> you know what these jokes are for, Paul? The people that have to fucking go through it every time they say it. All right. They deserve it's jokes, exhausting. too. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's emotionally exhausting because you love the person and they fucking do that. And there's something in your mind that goes maybe one time they do it and it's fucking sad. And by the way, if anybody has issues like that, call the hotline. Talk. Everybody to knows that, Paul. You don't have to fucking. You, everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. I know, but you said everybody me. knows that. Who doesn't think about killing themselves? I mean, when yeah. I was young, you always have the thought. Like when you're young, like a little quick thing, you know. You know oh, what I was afraid? Dark. <laughs> no, you know what I was afraid of? I was afraid of like joking, like joking with a rope, like, and then all of a sudden, like it, you slip. You're like, no, I didn't mean, I didn't fucking mean it, dude. I didn't help, you know. Like even though you wouldn't be able to scream. Well, if, yeah, I was gonna say if you if you can yell that, I think you're all right. Or like drowning in two inches. You know what? A big one of mine. Fear factor did this one thing, dude. The one fear factor that still haunts me to this day. I don't care about eating cow balls. I don't care about the insects and the tarantulas and all that. The one thing that fucking still makes me every time is the car that went into a swimming pool and the guy had to get out and he was just, and and like, there were like divers there in case he couldn't, but like you're strapped in a seatbelt, you get submerged and then you had to do it and get out dude. for me. Oh my God. I, that for me, dude, being underwater in a car in that little of water freaks me. That's like the number one thing that they hit for me. All right. You know? Well. And then, you know, there's that guy. There's that guy. Here's this guy. You're going to love this. No, I know how to do that. Listen, you got to wait and then open the guy that acts calm like he knows what to do. You wait for it to be submerged and then you go and swim out. It's not that big of a deal. It's like, it's like yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't get that. You got to wait till the pressure equalizes. Well, how do I do that? It's not a pressurized camp cabin. It's a fucking car. Maybe through the vents it gets equal. I don't know. Yeah, nobody knows. I mean, unless you're I feel like you just well, my thing is if you have electric windows, that's what sucks about electric windows, is if you go in, how do you get the windows to go down? You gotta be like when you're in the air like Dukes of Hazard. Let me get my hand in. Like Dukes of Hazard, that's when you fucking you're like, ah, and you gotta put the fucking window down as you're going. I'm gonna tell you something really stupid I did. Please don't judge me. I uh, know you will. I used to be afraid to go over bridges. Like mm -hmm. when I was like, so what I would do is I would drive over a bridge. And as soon as I started driving over a big bridge, I would take my seatbelt off and put all the windows down. So if it did fall into the water, in my mind, I'm not strapped in and I could just jump out of the thing. And then as soon as I would get over the bridge, all the windows come up and I'd strap back in. It's more OCD than anything else. I mean, I don't know. There's people that have been thrown from cars and lived. There's other people. There was a whole band. Everybody died except the one guy was wearing a seatbelt. He had minor injuries and the whole fucking band died because they were in a van and it rolled. It's a bet MGM show, everybody. It's a bet MGM show, people. We're talking suicide. We're talking a no. uh, uh, bunch of things here. 19 people. 
I think they said out of 2,000 and some people that jumped over the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, 19 of them survived. And all 19 that survived said as soon as they went over, they were like, ah, fuck, I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> no, wait, it's not that bad. Yeah, the guy was like broke every bone in his body. And he said he like talked about it in a documentary. He was like, as soon as I jumped, I was like, the fuck, dude? You know. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? I'm just thinking of that as the wind starts whistling as you're picking up speed. I still don't get how water turns into concrete after it's like it's not as it can't be as bad as concrete because you still go into it. You yeah, don't just dude, like bounce. No, but dude, a belly flop off of a diving board fucking hurts, man. So why like, can't you go in feet first, point your toes like Greg Luganus? Well, what's his name? David Blaine. David Blaine went on Conan years ago when Conan's show was in New York. And uh, I must have rest your soul, like just because the show's gone. But anyway, so he said to Conan, he's like, yeah, you know the way David Blaine talks? He goes, yeah, Conan, um, like he like that shit. And mm -hmm. he goes, if you actually jump off of like the Brooklyn Bridge, because he wanted to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. He said, if you drop something first and it causes a little bit of a splash or ripple you can go through that so i'm thinking about we're thinking about dropping something in front of me and i'm gonna jump off the brooklyn bridge and i remember conan just going why would you do that and everybody got really like a big laugh but he never he never ended up doing it because there's too much room for error there's too much room for error there i know? met that guy one time david blaine yeah hey bill it was funny what, immediately he was doing like a trick and he was just what's going, your favorite card i was bill? just going like have have we ever have we ever met have we ever met before it's like dude just do your fucking trick all right I know you don't really know. You're not really magical. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he felt that he also had to like distract me with his fucking bedroom voice was annoying to me. Cause I'm just like, I, I, yeah, I'm not going to be able to figure out what you do. You throw cards and the fucking thing sticks to the other side of the window. I don't know how you do that, but if you could actually, if, Paul, if you could actually do that, how quickly, the CIA would pick you up and drive you to wherever they have the aliens. Yeah. That would be it. He was on, he was on Jimmy Fallon and he had the roots and Jimmy Fallon losing it because he goes, Jimmy, I want you to think of an amphibian. And, and Jimmy Fallon goes, all right, a frog. And he goes, hold on. And he just starts drinking water and he spits up a frog and everybody, I mean, the roots ran, everybody went nuts. And it's like, yeah, what he did was he had a frog sitting in his, he drank like five or six glasses of water. He had a frog sitting there, went up, did the trick, regurgitated the frog into the thing. And everybody was like, yeah, yeah. but what if he said a lizard? What? What if he I, said a lizard? I know, but I, I think they're part of their thing is to lead you to say, when he went to Harrison Ford's house, he goes, Harrison, pick a fruit. It's like fucking big orange right there. <laughs> I wonder where the card is. I know. And then he fucking takes the card out of it. He takes the card out of it. And Harrison Ford. <laughs> you see, did you see Harrison Ford? He goes, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why they get like, it's just like, wow, that's some, I don't know when you did that. But it's like, it's the same trick where they can get you to pick the card here. They just stick it in the fucking orange. I will tell you this, dude. Card tricks, I kind of like because you know it's a trick, but it's, dude, Jimmy Schubert, comedian Jimmy Schubert's a magician. And we were in Vegas. And, dude, he did fucking, he fucked me up with one of those things. He, I took a card and then he showed me an Altoids container. And he opened the Altoids container. He never moved his hands. I saw everything he did. And he had all these Altoids in the container. And then he closed it. And then he fucking opened it later. And it was empty. And it had the card in it. And I was like, that's a fucking cool trick. Now, I know it's yeah, a, it's trick, a great trick. But that's a great trick. But when like David but Jimmy Blaine Schubert's not magical. He is when no, he's on stage, though. Nobody is. That's Dude, what I'm saying. It's stupid. David Blaine did like a pay-per-view. And he was supposed to jump in. That, like It was a big fuck up. The crane dropped him slow. There was a crane. Like that makes building like they, they use for buildings and it was like hooked up to him and he went down slow and it just went to black and it was like a he's like, Yeah, things didn't work out. It's like, yeah. Like walked on water, everyone went nuts, and they found out that it was just a clear table on top of it. You can't walk on he there oh, no, no, that was Chris Angel. He was walking on water and people were like, Oh, funny people swimming. <laughs> dude, I'll be honest. Some oh my just god stealing money, dude. Yeah, we went to that thing, dude. And I, I mean, listen, God bless him, but <laughs> we went to that Vegas show for Chris Angel, that mind freak thing. You think Jesus was watching going, hey, 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 this fucking guy, that's bullshit. 
Dad, he's using a table. They got all stunt doubles and shit that look exactly like him. A big poof. And then they transport, they teleport, and he's there. And everyone's like, how did you move from? All right. Anyway, you know what time it is, Bill. It's time for Oh, I know what time. At the Monday Night Special, back a boo doo boo Win some money for you. you. Let the Monday Night Special win some fucking money for you. You know, Paul, I was thinking, you know what's a good bet? Is when one team has a good defense. Meaning a great defense. Yeah. You know they're going to go Belichick. They're going to take away their first option. So then if you're going to guess touchdown, I kind of was thinking about that watching the Chiefs because he threw that other guy, that 84, whatever the hell his name is. Rex Reed. I don't know what his name is. But like I'm saying uh, Patrick Mahomes because they were doubling Kelsey in the beginning. But Kelsey ended up breaking free, and he still caught a touchdown. But I was thinking like, yeah, why wouldn't I think – that they would double Kelsey and these would lead this. It's like, all right, you're going to beat us with the number two receiver. I'm just saying, I think the number two receiver sometimes, if you got a good quarterback with a good offensive line against a good defense, you pick the number two receiver because they're probably going to double the first guy. That's all I'm trying to say here, Paul. I agree. I think it's a nice theory. Oh, I'm glad you said that because if you didn't, I was going to kill myself. <laughs> you don't got the balls. <laughs> uh, all right, we got Vikings minus three and a half at home. That's why you open with that joke. You know, and then Thanksgiving, you know, you always got that one guess. You know, that guy's always threatening to kill himself. <laughs> Do that out in Brooklyn. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Paul. Go ahead. I don't like I don't like the guest that that you that you you know the, the family member he's kind of like a distant one, and you go, Hey man, how you doing? How you been? And you got a glass of wine and you're happy for the holiday, and they just go, I ah, man, it's been all right, you know. It's like I don't. I didn't really want the real fucking thing, dude. You know, what would be great, Paul, if you just just walk away. Oh my god! And they'll know why, and and that won't be a fucking thing. Just walk away, and then turn around, look at them, and just laugh. That's great. Um, Paul, please yeah. do that. This just if oh. if it happens, just walk away. Everybody listening to this, if you got that person, and they go, well, you know, things have been look could be better. Just you know, go. it was a uh, it was a tough year, and just. Fucking you know, the voice away. changed. The voice. Yeah, you know, listen, dude. Tell what can you do? You're trying to figure it out. You just walk away. Listen, Paul, I'm really happy for you. You have a beautiful family. Everything seems to be working out. I mean, unfortunately, I can't say the same thing for myself. You know, three months ago, and you just fucking walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I came here to eat turkey and watch <laughs> football. Not uh, listen to the, your, your the results of your fucking decisions. All right, guys, we got the Vikings at home. Uh, uh, You know, saying all right, guys, is actually sexist. You might want to think about that. All right, let's go. All right, people. Um, um, Vikings are minus three and a half. Uh, The under over is 30. uh, I'm sorry, 43. Uh, Dude, the Vikings lost that heartbreaker at the very end to Denver, but Still covered. Why the fuck? Why the fuck are Bears getting all this respect? Are they are they playing now? They're starting to play a little better. Three and a half, Paul. The half. The half. The half. Mm, mm, mm. It's the name of this episode. Well, they I lost last that. week. I think they were a better team, and I like that kid Dobbs playing quarterback. I think the Vikings win the game by a touchdown. Let's take the Vikings. I think they're up by a touchdown, and they're going to fucking scare the shit out of us. All right, let's do that. You want to go over? You want to do over forty three or no? Root for some points or nah? Fucking bears are anemic. Yeah. I don't believe in the bears until they win it, an, another Super Bowl. Well, you're the special guy, dude, because your specials are on. Well, we've only won once this year, so let's let's go easy with the comp. Paul, Paul I got to tell you, I mean, I just, just been having a real tough time with the specials <laughs> this year. You know, uh, yeah, I was just, you know, shit at my job. The first year, I mean, we, we hit like five of them. And, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. Paul, where'd you go? Um, what do okay, you want to do, Dobbs? I will take, uh, I don't know, man. It's like, I like that kid and stuff, but I mean, he's still learning that fucking, this is third offense he's learning this year. Um, Yeah, but he's good. Dude. He's a rocket scientist, like legit. Well, great. He's playing football, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> We're not trying to go to outer space. I'm, I'm trying to get some fucking points here. He knows the playbook. 
uh, Gronkowski was not a rocket scientist. He was fucking an amazing football player. We're playing football here. Yeah, th- that's great, dude. That's a great joke when people go, yeah, dude, that's a smart kid. Dude, did you hear that he's like a scientist in the offseason? Yeah. How many scientists do you know can play football? <laughs> um, so what do you right. want? We, we both like the Vikings to win the game by four or more, right? And what's, what's the over-under? 43. Let's go over because everyone's going to think it's going to suck. All right. So we'll do Vikings and over, and we need one more. Uh, what's the over under that they bring up that he's actually a scientist before the second quarter? Can we bet on that? I would say definitely two times. <laughs> Let's take the over. I mean, you have to bet 900 to make a thousand. Um, Paul, you pick the next thing. They got a decent running back. Vikings. Paulie, can you hear me? I think Josh Dobbs throws one, dude. All right, good. He looked. He had that look when he walked off. When when Russell Wilson beat him at the last minute, he had the look on his face of like when he was saying like his congratulations to the other team. He had the look like, dude, I, I I'm not happy. I think he's gonna come out. He bald. had that look like it doesn't compute. Like he was looking at a graduated cylinder of liquid, and the information there did not match what was on his paper. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think he reads the playbook and he's so smart? He just goes next. <laughs> What else? Do you remember? That was another dumb thing. Speed readers. That was another bullshit. I remember a guy doing it on the news. Oh, no. What's happened? Oh, God. And then oh, and he was like reacting to what he was reading and just going like through. It's just like you went out. You got the cliff notes. You stuck the ace of spades in the orange before you went to fucking Harrison. I mean, come on. It's breaking and entering. And then you do a card trick, Paul. Yeah, because here's the, reality. It out. Here's the reality, Bill. You can't make a card appear in fruit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no just, one has that ability. <laughs> Dude, I had people. You buy the orange at a magic shop, you got to pay for it, and then they tell you how to fucking do it. I, I talked to a magician who showed me. He's like, yeah, you they cut it. And if you notice when they cut it, it's not a full cut because it's already fucking cut. So they just go like this and <laughs> they open it. It's ridiculous. It's, and it's perfectly cut. Dude, I had a it's dumb this. guy go, Dude, Chris Angel, dude, that could be Jesus, dude. But we were freaking out, me and my wife. Like, he might. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's on TV, dude. It's a camera. It's and you should have said to him, please tell me the two of you haven't made children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they did either. Um, Thank God. All right. So there we go. Wow, this has been a fun one. People were loving the last one. They're going to love this one. This one was, oh, this one was silly. Oh, Paul, we went all over the road here. Oh, uh, we suicide fucking magic tricks. <laughs> That's right. Driving over bridge. And yeah, and if Bruce Springsteen can, how come I can't hear you? I can't hear you. Paulie, can you hear me? Can you? Oh, all right, I'm going to wrap it up. I'll wrap it up, Paul. I'll wrap it up. Hey, this has been the Anything Better podcast. And my gift to you is that look of confusion on Paul Versey's face as he tries to figure out his audio. Uh, Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, we're very thankful for all of you. That have been yes. watching the podcast. We're so happy that we we hit one special this year. We we do really do take that seriously. I mean, I want to make our listeners money more than I mean, I don't give a fuck if I win or lose. I want them to win, you yeah. know? Yes, we love the specials. Um, and this week you got a possibility here. You got you got the Vikings doing my homecoming theory, a good team losing on the road. They're coming home. They got to win by four. Joshy Dobbs. I don't know why I called him Joshy. Josh Dobbs is going to throw a touchdown. And you know what? We're going to root for some points. Let's get 44 points. And um, there you go. So that's the Monday night special. And um, we hope from our families to yours, you guys have a happy, healthy Thanksgiving. Gamble responsibly. Throw in 10 bucks here, 20 bucks there. By the way, the BetMGM app, just throw in 10. They're going to give you up to 200. Good time to do it. It's Thanksgiving. Not bad. Catching a little scratch for Thanksgiving. You got three games. By the way, how about this real quick before we get out of here? The NFL doing a Black Friday Jets-Dolphins game? I'm not going to lie. It's nice to have four games this four ga- uh, four week four days this week of football. I mean, they're trying to break up marriages. They're gonna fucking show three games on Thursday, right? Three. Lenny, you Thursday. said you were gonna cut the turkey. Hang on a second, All right? And then they got the Black Friday game, 
Then you got Michigan and Ohio State on Saturday. All the rivalry games. Alabama, Auburn getting after it. Tell your right? mother to cut it. Tell your yeah. mother to cut it. Uh, this is one of the greatest weekends ever if you're not in a relationship. Wednesday night, you go down to the local place, all the hotties that you knew from high school, you chat them up. Hey, maybe you get lucky. Show up like a fucking idiot to somebody's Thanksgiving thing. You know, you got a bottle of booze. I'm saying if you're younger, Paul. This is for younger people, right? Then you watch three fucking football games. Black Friday. Unreal. You know, you get to watch video of people getting trampled at a big box store. College. Then you get to watch a game. You got the college football rivalries. Then you got football Sunday and you got Monday. I mean, what else do these people want? I mean, hey, it's all it is. Bill, go and ahead. I get it to you. They're going to pass something in the Senate that they don't want us to see. That's why they got all these games, Paul. Bill, Bill, ask me, like, uh, ask me if I'm excited for the, the this weekend. Hey, man, you see all these games, three, three fucking on Thanksgiving? And they even got one on uh, Black Friday, man. You got to be psyched, right? Yeah, you know, I guess. I got things at work going on, man. So it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, all the listeners, that's how you do it this weekend. I want, like, I swear to God, I don't give a fuck if your wife is saying something because she'll laugh. That is just so fucking ridiculous. That's such a ridiculous move out of nowhere. Hey, can I talk to you for a second? Okay, yeah. Carmela's here and she's just really sort of me. Just fucking walk no, away. No, no. Tell me you put your dog down. And when she gets mad, just laugh. Don't engage. Don't argue. Just laugh. Why are you walking away from me? Hey, you ever think maybe, you ever think maybe it's my Thanksgiving too? Yeah. And you know what? You know what's- You women, you don't get along with each other. Well, yeah. You know what's underrated too that people don't utilize enough, Bill? The look. Oh, Paul's coming hard. I can feel this. No, no, the look. You know, how about, can't just people have the look? Me and Stacy have the look. Cause we sit across from each other, so I'm at the uh -huh. head of the I'm at the head of the table here. She's at the hey, head. Hey, Paul, of the you're in charge. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's my it's my thing. Yeah. So no, like everybody's <laughs> everybody's lined up here, right? So you have all the people down the down the table. I'm at the head, and Stacy's at the head. When somebody does something we don't like, you know what I mean? Stacy, do we just go like this? Let's go. That's it. Let's go. Okay. You know that's it. And eyebrows then is a lot. Eyebrows get you cut. Yeah, eyebrows. Yeah, you, you can't gotta, go eyebrows. Eyebrows get you caught. This is what I. This is this is this is look. I'll give you a look. Okay, somebody says something fucked up. Say something fucked up, Paul. Good. We're at the table eating. I tell you, dude, the problem really is that for all these fucking migrants coming in, and that's what everybody's taking everybody's job. Or... <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you just look up. Yeah. You find your fucking friend. Yeah. And you just hold it for a second and a half. It's just too long. And then you just look and they know. Then what they do is this what they do. Then they got the napkin. They're going like. Because you know what it is too, though, Bill? The person that says that, they don't even realize that you could agree with what they're saying. It's just not the time, dude. It's not the time because everybody knows there's somebody at the table that doesn't agree. Dude, I, I'm going to say this. I know they're not going to listen. Dude, I was at the table at my Thanksgiving table once. And dude, somebody at the table was talking about people that are like special needs. And he kind of alluded to the fact he wasn't a media family, but he just goes, yeah, man, they should just have like an asylum for them, dude. They should just put him <laughs> in like a, and dude, somebody goes, what? And, and, and then I, oh just, no. And my mother-in-law was like, what? She, no, just no. And he's like, no, but I'm saying like, if they had a place to go and she's going, Please stop, dude. And I'm just eating my fucking cranberry sauce and it, it kind of diffused. But it was like, I mean, the dude just basically said if you're if somebody's going through that, their special needs, they should just have them in a place. And and, and I'm like, dude, all right. That that's like lifetime. Not in like you're not invited because that every every year he's going to say something stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the look, your look was good. Hey, Bill, you're a good actor. The I got look. a good look. I got a good look. You can't do eyebrows. Eyebrows get you caught. Yeah. You can get caught in the middle of an eyebrow thing. Then you got to turn it into a yawn. No, no. Or a neck thing. If you, no, if you, if you, caught, if you do this, you got to be like. No, no, no. You talk about the food. Ooh. If you get caught, if you go like this, like I'll do it. If I I'll go like if I get caught, though, this is me getting caught. If you just go. You know, I have the worst athlete's foot and I just I was itching it right before I sat down. Dude, those potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Those, this dude, that gravy. Um, how many you got? How many you got coming? We got 10 coming. You got more than 10? I don't know. Uh, I don't do the guest list. I invited a couple of buddies of mine. Um, Can't go more than 15 on Thanksgiving. It's the number. That's yeah. the number, dude. Yeah. Well, you uh, got to have a couple of buddies to come over to offset, Yes. you know, whatever's going to be going on. So you guys can peel off and give it. Listen, you know, I, I'd love to help, but I got to go. Uh, I got to entertain the buddies. Sick. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this thing up. All right, guys. This was an extended one. Uh, thank you guys so much. Check it out. Download the app. Ten dollars get you two hundred, regardless. Ten dollars. Come of your of your bet. Enjoy. Bet responsibly. Happy Thanksgiving from our show to you guys, to our families, to you guys. Enjoy football tomorrow, everybody, and we will see you next week for Week Thirteen on the Anything Better podcast. Take care. And I want to hear from people if they walked away. De Niro and Heat. You got to be. You got to walk away. You got to write into the show and let us know if you walked away from negative Nelly. Yep, I'm doing it. All right. I'm walking All right. away. All right, guys. We'll see All you. Right.